You are listening to episode 150 of My Life Radio. Today, I'm interviewing Tane Webster, aka Grow Sanctuary, on the misdiagnosis of ADHD. So this is something that he was diagnosed with at nine years old. And when we start talking about depression, anxiety, ADHD, a lot of people are prescribed pharmaceutical drugs for these conditions. And conditions should be put in quotes because the way that physicians diagnose or cast a spell on humanity by giving them a label of a certain psychological condition, that alone causes a lot of damage, which Tane gets into in this interview. And it's kind of a psychological operation, not even talking about the potentially and likely harmful effects of these prescribed hardcore narcotic pharmaceutical drugs as far as methamphetamines, which Tane says is very similar to Ritalin. So this is a very touchy subject, not only emotionally for people because they identify with the condition that they've been given. So in this interview, Tane gives a lot of great websites, resources, books that you can look into if you're interested in discovering the truth behind the so-called ADHD condition. So here we go. Here is Tane Webster. All right, we're here with Tane from Grow Sanctuary. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Matt. It's a it's a it's an honor to be here. I'm so grateful. I um, I wish I'd taken up the offer last year or whenever it was the prior year. Whenever we first started to talk about the potential for me to come on, we were talking about different topics back then. It was like gadolinium or something else. But um, yeah, it's great to be here. And I think the info I have for you and your audience is a good fit for the alternative, alternative mainstream information that is provided by Mito Life Radio. I love it. Yeah, and I've been on your show, I think, a few times now. And that was yeah. a lot of fun, Grow Sanctuary podcast. And um, yeah, this is a this is like an elephant in the room topic, right? Because I, I looked it up on good old Google and it said um, that it's like three, 3 million cases, three, 3 million US cases per year. It's a very common thing, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. And um, what we were talking about before we started recording is you said it's kind of like a fake diagnosis, right? Like they're pinning all these symptoms under this one diagnosis, but that's not really accurate. Yeah, yeah. And I, I one of the other things I, I jotted down to say at the start was that we'll get into that. Um, I could be really provocative about the way I'm sharing this information and i've done that in some instagram posts but that that will turn some people off early on in the podcast so i'm not going to do that and um yeah what you're alluding to yeah it's what we discussed before is, is sort of the case and so just to anyone out there who who does have adhd please be be open-minded and, and and listen all the way to the end if you have the time or at least check the show notes afterwards because i'll give matt some links for places other places where you can Hear, hear this perspective because I know I would have been shocked when I first heard this where I was. So, so don't don't um don't get pissed off when you hear this. So, how did you get into this? Because you were experiencing those symptoms and you started to research it and experiment on yourself. Or? Yeah. So I I haven't seen anyone else, or I, I have met some people and I've, I've chatted with some people in messages on Instagram who have similar experiences, but I, I haven't found anyone else who online who has had it from a child and had the experience with it and then realized what I've realized and is then sharing it online. 
um, pro proactively. So I, I had it, quote unquote, had it um, diagnosed at around nine years old. And um, just another thing to quickly note is this whole story, this whole episode, it, it relates to ADD and ADHD. There, there is like a slight difference. Um, well, I think they, they sort of maybe they've really kind of merged it to just be ADHD now. But what I'm saying applies to both of those. So, that, yeah, that's been my experience. I, I've had it, thought it was, I kind of moved through the different phases. Like I, I had the mainstream treatment for it. Then I thought I needed the alternative mainstream treatments. And then I realized that, like, actually, there's, it goes deeper than that. that um, just that you don't actually, you know, you do need the natural things that can make you better, but not for the for the for the right reasons not thinking that you have a permanent brain disorder um yeah interesting and the other um, thing and so thing you thought I should oh go ahead was, oh sorry, sorry Matt, was that this um it it applies to like for people who aren't in the ADHD, you know, they don't have ADHD or they don't have a family member or friend that has it, they, they might think this podcast is irrelevant. I think you'll still find it interesting, but it's also, I think, important to bring this topic up because that it also, to a lesser extent, also applies to just psychiatry in general. And psychiatry is sort of like a really freaky and dark part of the <laughs> kind of pharmaceutical um, industry. It's one of the like it's darker than some of the other parts which are already sad and and uh unfortunate what what thing what happens to people but because and this one doesn't get talked about much because a lot of the people who it happens to get completely wiped out they just they there's crazy stories on facebook you know i'm not saying believe all anecdotes you read online but i've spoken with enough people to understand that i was lucky to get through it the way i did compared to what's happened to a lot of other people so it's kind of like a SS, SSRIs for depression. I mean, I guess that's a whole nother show, but yeah. um, especially in the RAPE or metabolic community, there are a lot of people talking about that, um, how the selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are super dangerous, um, whether you have depression or not. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's another thing. Like, um, so the, the side effect, one of the side effects of ADHD drugs is is depression and then they get you on to the second <laughs> drug that way and it's, and I, I that happened to oh. me for for a short period of time it was like um like at less than a year or so that was towards the end towards the start of my awakening kind of um but yeah and 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 another thing to note like people who've followed me on instagram for ages this information it's going to be a little bit more lower level quote you know so to speak because I, I want us i want this to go far like to hundreds of thousands of people mm -hmm. maybe millions around the world and help them so i'm not i'm not mm -hmm. trying to make it all fun and um like quirk, quirky stuff like the normal stuff i post is we'll go over basic stuff obvious things awesome yeah so you, so you said add and adhd are kind of similar and they almost like merge them um what what exactly or, or what's the mainstream um perspective of what what it is like what do they say it is yeah so for the for the purpose of this podcast you can just pretty much just lump them together um mm -hmm. they they basically imply that it's a hereditary they well they they say that it's probably hereditary um and they they don't really if it's not hereditary they don't really explain how it suddenly happens they they they'll say that the child's just got this brain disorder out of the blue um they they've got questions which i can read off now if that's the right time to do it which is part of the di the, the diagnosis um they also use they also try and defend their claim by using uh, brain scans it's one of the one of their tricks so they 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 show parents pictures and of they got like a composite image of 27 children with ADHD their brain scans and then 27 children that don't have ADHD but what they won't tell you is that 27 children that have ADHD have also been drugged for six months to several years before the scanning occurred so 
yes, their brains look different because they've been on these crazy drugs. Like the methylphenidate, which is the, the there's a variety of ADHD drugs. So methylphenidate's Ritalin. Adderall is, is an amphetamine. So methylphenidate's like an amphetamine-like substance. But I'm just going to call them all stimulants because they're all, I mean, there are definitely differences, but they're all much to the same. Um, I will just point out as a side note, literally, um, this is one of the books that I've got all the information from, Peter Bregan. If you can ever get him on the podcast, he would be amazing. Um, that literally, they give methamphetamine to some children, like not methylphenidate, like methamphetamine. It's it's a it's 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 one of the it's one of the drugs. Like it's it's somehow allowed. So where was I going with all that? Yeah, that's 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 the mainstream treatment of uh of, of it interesting so you said they're stimulants because I, I think i was reading just researching before the show that coffee can be used um for you know this diagnosis quote unquote right? with and with less side effects <laughs> i don't know if you've oh, heard really? of that okay or... yeah i um <laughs> i have heard of yerba mate being something popular which is like a south mm -hmm. american thing i tried it mm -hmm. didn't really notice much either way for me the coffee i like the smell but i um <laughs> it seems to keep me really I, i'm really really alert and awake and and if mm -hmm. i take if i have coffee even early in the morning it, it i seem to notice it when i go to sleep but because mm -hmm. that's another thing like all of this advice all these things that we can share for benefiting people with quote-unquote adhd it's it's the funny thing is people can be brought into this diagnosis from from like the widest the widest possible like filter it's like cuz it could be they have the their parents were in you know particular you know going through some issues and that produced contributed to the symptoms which then led to the diagnosis you could also and that, and that person's also an ADHD and you could have someone else who it was a nutritional deficiency or whatever that brought them to the diagnosis of ADHD. And then, so to say, oh, this will help with ADHD and this won't, it's like, well, that, that it's so, there's such a wide range of people that are being lumped into this category. It's hard to say this will and this won't help. And there's, there's, there's clear things that will help everyone, which is the sort of stuff you talk about on your podcast and I talk about on Instagram and stuff. And, and we'll go into that. But it's that's why it's it's really tricky because it's just, it's just so it's just so wide. Like I'll, I'll read the the diagnostic criteria. So, mm. a little bit of background on this with psychiatry. Basically, they can vote conditions into existence. Sounds insane, but that's the way it works. And so they've just progressively been increasing the number of conditions mm. over the last sort of several decades. They would say that it's all well and, and needs to be done, but I disagree with them. <laughs> and it's called the DSM, the Diagnostics and Statistical mm -hmm. Manual, and they've had different versions, DSM 1, 2, 3, 4. I think we're up to 4 now, or it might be 5, but it doesn't really matter. It's just this book that gets bigger and bigger as they say, oh, this is also a condition, and, you know, magically, there's also a drug for it too. Um, so, yeah, they it says here, six or more of the following symptoms of inattention that have been present for at least six months to a point that is disruptive and inappropriate inappropriate for developmental level so very subjective terms littered throughout the statement um actually i don't know if i'll read all 18 but let's go with inattention <laughs> often does not give close attention to details or makes careless mistakes in schoolwork, work or other activities okay a clear indication of a brain disorder no uh, often has trouble keeping <laughs> attention on tasks or play activities uh, often does not seem to listen when spoken to directly. <laughs> often does not follow instructions and fails to finish schoolwork, chores, or duties in the workplace. Not due to oppositional behavior or failure to understand instructions. Uh, oft, uh, often has trouble organizing activities. Often avoids, dislikes, or doesn't want to do things that take a lot of mental effort for a long period of time, such as schoolwork or homework. Often loses things needed for tasks and activities is often easily distracted, like so vague, uh, is often mm. forgetful in daily activities. And here's the, here's the kicker. It says six or more of the following symptoms 
Oh, sorry. So no, I read that it starts with six or more of the following symptoms um, for at least six months to a point that it is disruptive and inappropriate. I've heard another definition. Maybe this is the correct, the official one, but I've heard another one where they say it has to be in two places at least, like two locations, like home and school or uh, school and sports club or, or something like that. But regardless, the, the main thing that's just so clearly just insane about this is that it's six or more so it's like okay the child has five of these symptoms but once they get the six that's when the brain disorder happens then the, there's a brain disorder <laughs> it's like how can you do that um it doesn't sound very accurate and, yeah <laughs> engine into my 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 little story so i'll give a quick overview of it so basically mm-hmm. nine years old uh upper you know, sort of comfortable middle class family no no like family problems with alcohol or you know that that sort of thing was kind of ruled out um very very active because i'm i'm 28 now so my generation didn't really have that much computer stuff as a kid lots of building huts outside and all that sort of stuff and i yeah yeah i think it was mainly just mainly just disagreements with 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 parents like mum especially just like saying no and, and and being difficult that sort of stuff and they had the resources and to in terms of um, knowledge and financial resources to you know well this is the we want to do the best you know because one of the things that doctors one of the narratives is it's like well you wouldn't you wouldn't not give your child insulin if they have diabetes that's literally one of the narratives they'll use and it's like well diabetes is like proven compared to it's, 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 a, it's a different it's not a fair comparison but so so a lot of parents get you know bought into it that way and of course like a psychologist they pass me on up, upgraded upgraded to a psychiatrist <laughs> and the, the 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 sessions are it's really it's creepy it's really creepy like you literally get put in these rooms with old guys um Nothing great, nothing creepy ever happened, but it's like they've got these massive expensive offices because they're getting paid five hundred dollars for an hour and a half consultation and these leather chairs, you just sit there and they're asking all these questions and you feel like you're being interrogated <laughs> for, for bad behavior or something. And um and that they're taking notes. And I actually got a hold of some of the notes from some of the ones that I was able to track down, um, which can go over later, but they they ask you these questions. They they sort of go the parents, the parents, then the child on their own, and then together. And they, at some point, I can't remember which after how which amount of point appointments they decided that I had the condition, <laughs> and um, they they gave me that they gave me the condition. They actually gave me two conditions. I I didn't know this until until earlier this year when I I um, managed to chase them down to get the uh, get the documents i uh, that's they actually gave me oppositional defiant disorder as well and that's that's a huge just laugh that whole condition is even more of a laugh because it's like it's like okay so now we're we're now we're pathologizing children that are defiant (laughs) and thankfully there's no drug for oppositional defiant disorder it's just it's just something that commonly i think it's they say it's like a third of the adhd people have it or, or something like that um so i got those i got two conditions not just one, two, <laughs> and and then they get you on to the drugs, um, and and they and and to their credit, they they do chuck in behavioral quote unquote behavioral therapy as well. Like they try, they, they at least I think for themselves they want to they want to at least be seen to be not just a hundred percent relying on pharmaceuticals. So, but the but the behavioral therapy things are weird. So for example, they had a one of the things they did was they gave me this notebook. And they and it had like and I was supposed to write in there what the bad version of me was think was was thinking of doing like the naughty version of me like um and and what the good version of me did instead like so they're like setting someone up for like bipolar disorder or something like you've got t- a split personality or something <laughs> <laughs> and I had to bring this notebook back um and as a side note that the other thing that's funny is that because of this like being like psychoanalyzed it, it that imparted on to me and and i now do that to a lot of people like i 
I analyze people more than is fear and and um, and mm-hmm. judge people for, for certain things. I really just notice a lot when I'm speaking with people and there's benefits and, and negatives to that, but it's it's a profound experience at that age to go through to go through that way. Um, and it's not always like that because some in America it's it's a lot worse as a lot, as is a lot of things that mm-hmm. in America it's like I think that they, they just go straight to the drugs and um, they're very loose with it. Like I've seen statistics in America, it was in this book um, where it was like twenty percent of one district in Virginia of like white boys were were on it. Uh, in a in in grades x to x or whatever some like um, elementary school grades so yeah do you have any questions up until now or should i keep just going did you guys have like boot camp there like i remember i had a childhood friend that you know it's very similar to the things you know add or just defiant and they just sent them to military boot camp it's just like here we're gonna have a drill sergeant yell at you <laughs> that's i know yeah that it was um, America quite my bit. my dad we, we we don't have i'm sure we have something like that i know that there's a thing in new zealand called charter schools that they are working on and one of those is like a military style one and the current current government is trying to phase those out um so maybe that's a sign that they're good but um my, my dad was 25 years in the military and so i kind of had that potential at home and it was maybe it wasn't like that at home but um maybe that's why they never thought of that option because they thought they could do it themselves anyway uh, um so yeah no i i have I've, I've heard of that and i'm sure i'm sure it's helpful like because the sometimes it's related sometimes it's simply just a bad relationship with with a particular person and then you remove that person or you just change the environment and and it's and it's completely different um i mean one of the things that Peter Regan will point out is that imagine imagine if someone told you you only had a condition that was only present in certain people's um, <laughs> when you're with certain people. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's, you have it there, but not here. Because that, that's the thing. Like you could ask those same subjective questions to the auntie or the grandma who you spend a week with on the holidays to your parents, to your math teacher, to your science teacher, and all the answers could be slightly different. Yeah, the, yeah, the doctor or the psychiatrist <laughs> that gets to ask those questions gets to make the final call on whether you have this disorder or not. So I had the had the thing, got on Ritalin. Um, the drug of choice in America seems to be Adderall. Um, it's Ritalin at that point in time in New Zealand, at least. I, it was pretty rough. Like the first the first day, I refused to take it just on instinct. <laughs> <laughs> and, and um my my dear mother she <laughs> she forced it into my mouth with a piece of like a corner of a piece of bread um and that was pretty in, in hindsight that must have been extremely traumatizing also for my brother because he was pretty similar close age and similar personality um so he must have thought fuck you know oh, i shouldn't have sworn um, I might be next, you know, and um, so that was that was rough. But the, the thing is, and another thing, just a sort of a tangent, is my my mother's background kind of influenced the fact that this happened, um, because she's a psychologist herself, an industrial psychologist, really, really, really qualified and experienced, and so that's different to clinical psychology. But of course, it's the same sort of space at university she, she knows psychologists so it was sort of like well you're doing the best thing for your child by getting them to these professionals and getting them on this medication you know it's you're, do, you're doing the right thing that's the that's the narrative um so she thought she was doing the right thing and once you're on it for a f- it's a really dull numbing taste on the tongue like if you just let it dissolve on the tongue i can still remember it now i haven't haven't taken it in seven or eight years um and yeah when you, but once you've been on it for a few days you go it just zombifies you and and they they use that they use that term some of the professionals even use that term like a zombie-like state um, um wow. for, the, for the response to, to the drug and so 
once you're on it for a while, it actually starts to be addictive, even if you don't like the taste, because um, you can just swallow it anyway. Um, it becomes it has it's addictive. Like another key point is that this is this you know chemical is very similar to cocaine. Uh, I mean, the psychiatrist would make like a huge that spares about that and say, oh, no, you've got the chemistry wrong. Like it's it's this different and blah, blah, blah. But um, the, 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 the people who speak the truth, like Peter Bregan, Robert Whitaker, Fred Bauman, um, Peter Goach, um, there are many others. That it, it's basically a similar effect on the brain as cocaine, except it's longer lasting. The methylphenidate is like longer lasting cocaine. Um, and, and that's why, you know, probably one of the reasons it, it there are people who use it for fun who, who aren't even with, you know, ADHD. There are people, and, and it's illegal to do that. That's, and that's a really funny thing to point out, that it's illegal for some people to take this because it's so, it's so dangerous, but it's legal for some kids to have it because they've been given the diagnosis. Makes no sense. Um, but I, I took it, zombified, changed my personality for sure. Um, it, they say it decreases curiosity, it decreases the desire for like socializing, like very socially withdrawn children, they become kind of kind of loners. I still had a couple of good friends, but I definitely I definitely had that social withdrawal, like just walking around the playground on my own, just like just like walking around, <laughs> not not necessarily in a bad mood, but just like walking around on my own. Um, and 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 because I had to take one one in the morning and half in the afternoon, and they. The, the another crazy thing to point out is that psychiatrists i reckon they, they trick you they say don't tell anyone you're taking it don't tell anyone you're taking it because you might get bullied right so so you end up being this kid that's like opening up like a little a little package of this thing and chugging it after school like before you, before you play sport or whatever so before no one well no one can see but i think the truth of that is if you told people you'd have other kids' parents and teachers being like, what the hell is going on? Why are you taking this? What is in that? And and so they say not to do it because you get bullied, but it's it's like I think you would actually be more likely helped if if they if people saw you doing it. So it, it, and, and that and that also like feeds into this feeling of because a lot of people go through a lot of people this really wrecks. They go from Ritalin into those hardcore illegal illicit drugs. And and I think feel like telling people not to tell anyone about it, like making it like a secret, kind of feeds them into that because that's what you know someone presumably who gets into pee or whatever would would probably do. They would be really secretive about it. So that's really creepy and weird too. Wow. Um, there's the side effects are, are too long for to cover. It's it's literally just like I've got it up here um, on the where is it FDA Ritalin SR like. You can anybody can look it up. The list is just insanely long. It's insanely long. There's, um, it can mess with the vascular system. It can mess with the liver. I mean, it's sort of like what can't it mess with, and what does it mess with most is is more a more accurate way to think about what this does. Um, but the particularly gnarly thing is, it it can cause suicidal ideation, and self harming. And depression, anxiety, um, but it can even cause like bipolar, which I kind of mentioned earlier. And and there had never been cases of ch ch childhood bipolar up until the introduction of or well, the widespread use of these drugs. And then that started to create the market for um, bipolar in children. That's that's something else I've wow. I've read. But yeah, the brutal thing is. I yeah I got to the point where I was literally banging my head on the wall, punching myself in the head, as like a thirteen year old, and that was and and I never had I had no idea that it could because could be from the drugs, so I never mentioned it to the psychologist or a doctor. I just thought, oh fuck, I'm 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 a messed up person, and my 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 mum thought it was like because in, the, in the, this is the real sick thing in the in the ADHD books which she was well read on trying to do the right thing it's it says that like these children will um like do things for attention they'll they'll do things for attention and so it was like oh, i'll put down i was just doing it for attention and i did 
a lot of research and got the papers back from the New Zealand government, the Medical Medicines Regulating Agency, MedSafe. And at the time when I was taking these, like 2000, as far back as 2000, 2004 at least, they admitted in their own in their own paperwork, not the paperwork from Novartis or the pharmaceutical companies, but the New Zealand government's paperwork, that this drug can cause suicidal ideation. But at no point did the did the uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, GP, which is their family physician, or pharmacist, none of those four ever mentioned that. But you're giving it to children. And this is happening, you know, what widespread use. The, the, the number of people getting it is higher and higher every year. And, 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 and to not mention that. The, in their defense, then they would try and say, oh, well, we should do a better job. We should still prescribe it, but we should warn people. But it's like, yeah, okay, you're just putting a Band-Aid on it. It's like a not even a half solution. So that was probably the, the gnarliest side effect. That, that didn't last very long, um, but it was rough to happen. Um, you got any questions? <laughs> what was like your um, water and food consumption growing up? Because I feel like that's, a missing factor, not only in this um, topic, but in every health condition that they diagnose. Yeah, it's like we're not looking at iron overload, you know, fluoride, which is kind of basic, but maybe more importantly, iron overload and calcium overload and um, aluminum. You mm-hmm. know, drinking out of uh, you know acidic beverages out of aluminum cans, like almost everyone on Earth's doing right now. Yeah, and that how that affects the brain, and obviously lead and mold, and there's so yeah. many factors, right? Getting yeah, sprayed I, from the sky. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, I, I'm kind of a proof that even with all that stuff, well, it wasn't wasn't perfect, but I I had it good. I had good food. Um, even like organic beef and lamb. Um, not 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 all the other foods, but just just so happened that the butcher really close to us at one point was. Has it had sold that stuff at a really affordable price? And uh, I, I would have had fluoride for around up until um, five, six, seven, eight, nine at age, but not after that. Um, and food was pretty good, like probably like, you know, wouldn't be all coconut oil and, you know, saturated fat for cooking, but, but a lot of like butter and New Zealand butter is good. A lot of, a lot of dairy, pasteurized dairy, um, like free range eggs or like, it was pretty, pretty good diet compared to the standard American diet and, and lots of time outdoors because I was doing different sports and minimal TV, no phone because phones weren't, you know, a thing back then, lots of reading. So it was pretty, pretty good. So that's, that's, that's why, like I was saying before, with how wide this the, the, the filter is for people coming into this, like um, there are definitely people who it will be the nutritional thing that will help them if they are on terrible mm-hmm. a terrible diet. In my case, it was probably just like family stuff, family internal family stuff that that needed um, that needed attention. So yeah, that was that wasn't really an issue for me. Interesting. Yeah. Um, well, one thing I thought of when you were telling your that story, um, and it sounds like there's a lot of gaslighting going on, <laughs> um, but you made me think of like, I remember being back in, in school, you know, the conventional school system and even college and remembering how we're like forced to learn things and forced to memorize things. And that's so uh, like unnatural to me and harmful. Um, versus like being able to learn and memorize what we want to learn and memorize, which is individual person to person. Do you think that that contributes to this diagnosis, just that unnatural school system that we're being forced into? For sure, for sure. I mean, it it, it can definitely be contributing, but it doesn't mean that that way of teaching is bad for everyone. I mean, some people can can do Mm -hmm. well with that. They do say that, excuse me, they do say that, um, one there's a book by Thomas Hartman, which is that people with ADHD are hunters in a farmer's society. That that's that's one. Mm. But again, again, that person is I would say is still part of the alternative 
mainstream because it's like that you're still trying to sell one theory to explain like mm-hmm. this huge thing so it doesn't because that won't explain it for everyone um but i'm sure that contributes to it like i, I have an article here um that i'll i'll send you to include in the, the thing but it's 17 reasons uh, where's the article for it 17 reasons why i believe adhd is not a legitimate medical disorder by what's his name uh, Thomas Armstrong, PhD. I think he's in California, like an educational consultant or something like that. But um, in that, he includes so, col- our, you know, the culture has changed. So, like you're saying, like at a time when people were wild, rambunctious, like kids outside more, when that was normal, there would be less of less room for this diagnosis diagnosis to exist because there would be less situations where, you know, it's called, you know, they would be able to argue that someone's hyperactive. Because that, that's like one of the claims, oh, you're hyperactive. But it's like, well, what if our whole society is underactive? You know, <laughs> and you're just normal. <laughs> I don't, and, but again, that only explains uh, one form of the diagnosis because in, and there'll be other cases where it's like a family thing, you know, a family thing. Um, and another thing is, yeah, so he says, kids with the pressure to succeed in schools boys boys literally being a boy puts you at a higher rate of being diagnosed <laughs> adhd than a than a girl um it's and and his theory there is that it's like he says it shouldn't be a medical disorder to behave like a boy which is true because a, a, a lot of the yeah the behaviors match more closely to um young male behavior being rowdy enjoying lots of action packed moments and, and the rates are much higher. Like, I think the highest rates are, like, Caucasian boys in America. Uh, that's, like, the highest rate. And, and boys in America in general. Uh, and America just has the highest rates. Um, but but um, around the world, boys have higher rates than, than girls. Uh, which immediately should make some people question, like, okay, if, you know, <laughs> there's something more to this. So, so yeah, the school system does, does play a part in it. For me, school, like in terms of homework and things like that, wasn't wasn't an issue. Um, uh, and I'm good at learning by rote learning. That's just me personally. But yeah, that, that sort of answers your question. Yeah, yeah. I, I just maybe it was just the schooling system in Southern California. But I I remember even when I was super calcified and ironed out, I remember just thinking. Like, wow, this is useless information that I'm being forced to learn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I just had trouble keeping my attention on it. But I guess it could have been a lot of things. Um, but that's interesting about the Caucasian boys. I remember being shown Columbine, that documentary, Bowling for Columbine in school. And a lot of these school shootings or just shootings in general, usually it's the Caucasians, right? And they're probably, they're, I think, don't they usually find they're on some psych- type of psychiatric medication like methylfolinate or yeah 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 that's probably a crazy rabbit hole not to go into on this but but <laughs> yeah, there, there's literally an entire documentary about that and i can send you the link for it it's like wow. an hour documentary i think it's made like seven five or seven years ago um specifically about those sad events and and the drugs that the people who did them or or, or there have been cases where people have almost done them and it was stopped but they were so many of them have been on these crazy medications, um, like multiple sometimes. You know, one is bad enough, but to have two at the same time, so that that that's that's a hundred percent an issue. Um, yeah, I think another thing that's probably good to just quickly go through is conditions that mimic. So this is an article. Another really good website is ritalindeath.com. And it's that's made by a family, a really, really wonderful family that lost their son to to Ritalin. Like, cause t- children have literally died on these, not just not from killing themselves, but from um, sometimes they just wake up dead. Like, like there's heart heart issues related to it. Um, and there was, it was in the late 1990s, there was a big court case that some really good lawyers, I think, down in Texas, tried to do 
against these companies, but they they were unsuccessful. Um, and they so those people were you know really on the ball early on. You know they they realized what was going on early on and tried to stop it. But obviously you know you have to winning in the in the in the court against these massive companies is just a huge mission. And really really what needs to happen is you you win in the court of public opinion first. You get the public on your side, and then and then and that's what we're doing. You know by raising awareness to it. But so on that on that website one of the one of my favorite articles is conditions that mimic ADD or ADHD, because to me, this kind of explains it the best what, what, what people are actually going through. Like you've got symptoms that are hundred percent real, not denying your reality, but you, to, there's no, no, it's not helpful and it doesn't, it, it's not logical to then say, Oh, it's because of a disorder in my brain. Like there's a, a screw loose in your head or something, um, you know, You've no, you've got no proof of that. And even if you did, you know, if you did the brain scan and there's individual variation there, for one. And if you've ever, if you've ever been on psychiatric mm. medication before, for a, you know even a short period of time, that will cause changes. So how do you know you're not noticing that? Which is the, they call it the brain scan scam. That's what Peter Regan calls it. Mm. So, on the list here, you just just raise your hand if you want to touch on any of them because I think some of them are things we talked about beforehand. And you mentioned like the mm. mineral thing, mm. so and iron so hypoglycemia allergies so allergies alone you know it could be just simple as like a gluten or a, or pasteurized dairy you know um learning mm. disabilities so there are genuine learning disabilities that could be you know un um, un unintentionally diagnosed as, as adhd hyper or hypothyroidism which was a that was a surprising one for me to learn. Um, hearing and vision mm. problems. So auditory issues, as I mentioned before, we started are, are another common, um, you could say, risk factor in getting this diagnosis. It it can produce similar mm. symptoms. So that would be the child's not hearing properly out of one ear, or they're hearing different frequencies, um, out of different out of the different ears, and it's not all it's not all matched up. Um, Lead levels, lead levels is another one. And again, that's just like common sense, natural health stuff. You want to reduce your exposure to these toxic substances. So here's a perfect example. Oh yeah. No, go ahead. Just, I'll say after. Yeah. Oh, so I was gonna say is like here's a perfect example where a child might just have lead in their water, where Flint, Michigan, or whatever it was, or you know different towns where things are real bad. That's the clear cause of their problem. But instead of that getting noticed and dealt with. With a, with a water filter, they're getting the diagnosis and the drugs instead. It's like, what the hell? You know, they could have just addressed this thing that's causing it. What were you going to say? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, well, back to the hearing and vision problems. Um, I remember learning that dopamine is largely created via light stimulus in the eye, like full spectrum sunlight or blue light in the morning and afternoon. And we don't create proper dopamine if we're not getting light for, or we're getting the wrong light like you often talk about with emfs right and artificial light i'm sure that does a number um you know for creating this diagnosis yeah yeah i just remember reminded me of something um <laughs> our good friend jack cruz said bless him um he he mentioned i think i'm pretty sure hopefully i'm not misquoting him but i'm pretty sure he, made, he shared some study where it was like they did had the really hardcore artificial blue lights in a classroom and the, the rates of ADHD diagnosis was was higher than than in a classroom with the just the just natural light or, or, or different lights. Like so yeah. It, it makes sense. And that and that wouldn't just be to do with the blue, it would be the flicker as well for a lot of these LEDs. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a distraction as Andrew Andrew Latour has, has mentioned. So so that's another one. Spinal problems. So obviously, you know, messing with the nerves going up to the, the neck and brain. Toxin exposure in general. So just general toxins like pesticides. Uh, they've got seizure disorders, carbon monoxide poisoning, metabolic disorders, um, sleeping disorders. So again, you know, it could be as simple as the child's just not getting enough sleep. Like, or, or you know, there's a street light getting through the window and the curtains don't black it out enough or they're um they've got a night light or they've got some other tech in their room that emits a small light you know cover all the lights or get a red you know get a one of those red stickers or whatever put it on it 
um, high mercury levels. Again, it's just a basic toxin thing. So amalgam filling introduction. And I, I did have a couple. I got them switched out for um, like a ceramic thing two years ago. But I don't, I'd need to check the dates on that to see if they line up with my diagnosis or not. But, you know, it's not hard to believe that, oh, they suddenly get mercury in their mouth and suddenly their behavior changes for the worse. Not hard to, not hard to predict. Um, they've got iron deficiency here, which doesn't really make sense with what you say. Um, well, maybe iron's in the knows? wrong maybe spot. Maybe, maybe that's just... Heat Sorry. <laughs> So I think there was a delay. I was saying maybe just iron's in the wrong spot. So they're calling it a deficiency, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, B vitamin deficiencies. That's one that's come up um, regularly. I, I will at some point go through a quick list of supplements, not as recommendations, just things that I've looked into. And B vitamins is a re repeating, recurring theme. I haven't actually taken any myself because it's one of the more, I'm not against synthetic synthetic -y supplements that aren't like 100 percent natural but i try to avoid them and i haven't i haven't experienced with them yet but it comes up a lot of times just with different people i've spoken to like i meet heaps of people in natural health space like massage therapists and things and they're in naturopaths and, and b vitamins for this is something that they've they've mentioned several times so hmm. it seems to be seems to be some validity to that um there is early onset diabetes uh being a contributing factor it's kind of out there i wouldn't have thought of that but heart disease cardiac conditions central auditory processing disorder so that's the ear infections there and i i did have an ear infection the year before i got my diagnosis um i was swimming in a spa when i shouldn't have put my head under the water <laughs> at, a, <laughs> at a at a at a like a hotel somewhere and um you know so again it's like that's the root cause it's not the it's not the supposed brain disorder uh worms so yeah, like parasites oh yeah what were you gonna say I, I have the list up here excessive amounts of vitamins i wonder if the fortified d3 is contributing in the in the dairy yeah and, that was sorry i, I skipped yeah. that one yeah um i thought it wasn't that <laughs> random but yeah that could be it but like i feel like most children aren't getting given supplements unless their parents are really onto it so like those would be the yeah. least likely to get a diagnosis i mean they'll make up like a small percentage of it but um mm -hmm. it could be it but i i reckon that one's unlikely because yeah i don't know many many parents that give supplements but i mean in america there's probably there's probably some and it could be that you know that they could be in the you know the higher higher you know further from the equator and they're giving them d3 to help them especially la especially the last year and a half so much parroting of mm -hmm. the D3 narrative. <laughs> um, so that, that could be contributing to ADHD rates in the, in the last year and a half, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so parasites could just be something like that. And I know there's mm -hmm. people that I follow and follow me and friends that believe that all parasites are good, the Agenus Bonda Planets crowd. And I, I'm, just, I'm just not sure on that. I'm, I'm not going to claim either way. To me, it, it seems like mm -hmm. the, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be hard to believe that there's some that are bad. So, mm -hmm. so th there's that um, malnutrition or improper diet. Like clearly that's going to matter. Um, head injuries. So concussion, like a lot of people, you know, if you're playing, I don't know, American football in America or rugby in New Zealand or even just like soccer or something and you bang into someone, then, you know, that could be the thing that, the straw that breaks the camel's back or the, the, the straw that creates the symptoms that, gets you the diagnosis uh fetal alcohol syndrome you know that's just something which is going to be bad for everything mm. period um intentionally or unintentionally sniffing materials so <laughs> that's like glues and things so i mean children <laughs> you know there's another reason for that low toxic living type stuff so again yeah. it's just a toxin thing it's like avoid the bad stuff um uh, a beta hemolytic streptococcus. I don't really know what that is, but you know, um, lack of exercise. Oh, pan yeah. Oh, yeah. You go. Yeah, pan a lot of people are talking about pandas now. Pediatric autoimmune. Yeah, that neuropsychiatric. Came up. Yeah. <laughs> I, it's another one of those 
growing diagnoses, right? <laughs> you were mentioning. Yeah, this is really yeah. interesting. Like, because I, I, I'm learning this as well. I mean, I'd read that, but I just brushed it off as something I didn't know. But so you, it is going up in America, is it? I'm getting questions about it almost every day. You know, does this relate with to pandas or whatever podcast I'm doing? Oh. Um, but yeah, some symptoms of pandas include obsessive compulsive behavior, Tourette's, hyperactivity, cognition problems, and fidgeting. Maybe it's just another That's name for this. Yeah, it does come across. <laughs> it comes across as another one of those just like really broad labels to cover up other things like yeah. other root cause issues. Like, ah, oh, you have a. Oh, you have a neuropsychiatric pediatric. You have a pediatric neuropsychiatric disorder. <laughs> no, you have too much lead or too much toxin. You know, too much of a toxin. Not enough healthy food. Not enough vitamins. Um, not enough time outside. Mm-hmm. So yeah, totally agree with you there. So lack of exercise is the next one. That that could be the case. Um, because again, with ADHD, it's so broad that hyperactivity is just one segment. So you could have people who are underactive as well uh another one is gifted children so gifted children have a low tolerance for persistent on tasks they seem irrelevant um intense emotions etc etc emotional problems kids who are experiencing emotional problems often display adhd like symptoms um so, you know, that's like the family issues I mentioned before. Uh, some kids are spoiled and undisciplined. Makes sense again. Spirited children. I thought this was quite an interesting one. Um, spirited children. The problem does not usually lie with the child, but with society's perception of what normal childhood behavior is. <laughs> um, that, that sounds quite, quite true. Um, lack of understanding and communication skills. Early stage brain tumors, that's quite specific, but it you know it could be one. Brain cysts, temporal lobe seizures, genetic disorder. I've never heard that one before. X, Y, Y. Peripheria, that's like a, that's a, what is it? Enzyme deficiency. Candida albicans, so that gets like the parasite type thing, right? Or uh, infection. And then intestinal parasites robbing the body of, of nutrients. So, you know, that's a massive list and it's probably there's probably more that could be added to it. And no GPs go through all of those. No I'm pretty sure there wasn't a doctor on the planet that goes through all of those before if they're gonna prescribe and, and then prescribe it after checking all those things. Because it would take it would take too long. You know, they've got short short appointment times um and they don't have the knowledge for it. But yeah, is there anything else that stood out on that? No, that's a really great list. And um, yeah, I wonder if they, I don't think they brought up mold on this list. Yeah, because I have yeah. friends that are all about the mold illness and black mold. And that seems to really screw up our neurotransmitter balance. Just um, growing up in a moldy home by the beach or whatever. Um, that's pretty hard to detox, <laughs> you know, without mm-hmm. ozone mm-hmm. and some hardcore stuff like that. Yeah. But yeah, that was that was great. That's that's really interesting. Um, and they didn't mention EMFs too. That's a huge one, right? No, yeah, I can send them some info on that. Um, yeah, I think for sure nowadays. Um, but then, yeah, it'd be important to say that it's like a recent addition because otherwise, mm. then you'd have the psychiatrist saying the EMF wasn't that bad in the '90s or the early 2000s, which is true. Um, but yeah, it would mm. definitely be a contributing factor today. I mean. Again, it's like a lot of other things. What doesn't it affect? What what doesn't it affect? Um, mm-hmm. So basically, to people out there, I would say, and we, we can go over some of this now in the question and answers and things, but like you want to just work, figure out what the issues are for you that, that are contributing to your ADHD-like symptoms or quote-unquote ADHD symptoms, and then see what lifestyle, environmental, nutritional, mindset even you know psychological emotional what what are the things you need to work on and then slowly start to work on those and with time they'll get better that would be that would be my way of looking at it and it might take a long time the other thing that's really 
sad and unfortunate is if you've been on the drugs for a long period of time, now you not only have to work on what issue you had that led to your diagnosis, but you also have to work on healing yourself from the from the drug damage because the, the drugs do cause damage. Um, we know it from the brain scans. that They do cause damage. Um, and that's like a really, it's like a, literally an emerging area on the internet. Like I haven't found anyone else who's who can answer my questions on how to, detox is the wrong word, but how to sort of detox or heal the brain from stimulant abuse. And I, I've, I've, I've spoken with neurologists. I sent an email to a really, really expensive, like, um, what do you call them? Recovery clinic for, you know, like um, high flyers that are addicted to drugs <laughs> to ask them how do the people there who have got cocaine addictions or pee addictions, because that's the most similar thing to methylphenidate, how do they heal from it and what do they use to heal from it? And and they're working on articles for that and they would, you know, the, the information there would be somewhat somewhat applicable to the ADHD medication because of its similar effect on the brain. But there, there's hardly anybody out there uh, looking into that, there is a lot of information on how to naturally treat ADHD, treat ADHD. And although they've got the premise wrong that you ha- that you are treating ADHD, the information they share is still good. A lot of good people doing that, and and I've benefited from them as well. Do you think a lot of people are using alcohol, tobacco, and cannabis, and of course the least healthy versions of all these things? You know, Budweiser and Marlboro conventional cigarettes and super sprayed, you know, NPK grown cannabis and, you know, all that said, do you think people are, a lot of people are self-medicating, even if they're not taking these, you know, approved drugs? (laughs) Yeah, that's a good question. I think, I think, yeah, there there will be some people, but the thing with that is it'd be so hard to say because people take those for so many reasons um, for self-medicating for other things, like it might be depression or, or whatever, how um, you know, daily life issue they're getting through. But um, yeah, for sure, for sure. It's, um, yeah, for sure, those people do use those things. And cannabis is an interesting one. In New Zealand, it's, it's pretty much illegal. I did buy some CBD oil from Cannabis Clinic, which is like the only legal place you can get it from. I did try it earlier this year, and I noticed a slight difference. Um, but not much. But um, you know, it, there are people that think that CBD oil, like it, can help with autism and things. Um, and so I think that that that's one of the things that I've got on my sort of long list of things to consider. But it's a tricky one because of the different countries, different rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's interesting because tobacco, like clean tobacco, that can actually improve uh, motor function. And um, it, uh, I think it mimics acetylcholine in the brain, which mm-hmm. has implications for attention span. And it, I believe it raises dopamine and even raises, uh, I think, pregnenolone. Might be thinking of cannabis, but there are strong hormonal effects of these substances um, that definitely affect our mood. <laughs> for sure, for sure. And yes, yeah, so, I mean, I would, I'm sure this will come up in the, in the questions Q&A, but like what I would do is look at the information that good natural health promoters online share and try and incorporate as much of that as possible. You want to go as many angles as possible. So Matt's page is good. My page is good. There's other people that I follow that I think are good. And, you know, you want to reduce your blue light exposure at night. That alone might be the game changer for someone. You want to add in red light, add in more sunlight, add in more good quality meat and you know eggs and and dairy if you can get raw dairy try that if you can't see if the see if some pasteurized dairy works for you if it doesn't try it try removing it you're gonna have to do uh, a trial and error because like i said at the start you could be coming into this condition for so many reasons and coming into this supposed condition for so many reasons so um and and i and my you can ask questions to me on instagram at grow sanctuary i'm happy to happy to answer people and maybe even do consults if there's the interest for it but uh yeah so let's maybe let's get into some of the questions i think the only other thing that i had jotted down was the issue of informed consent so 
children are not being given informed consent with this and the parents aren't even either but especially not the children because the children wouldn't know to look up the side effects so if the doctor doesn't tell them the side effects verbally uh you know this could make you want to kill yourself um which they're never going to say then then you're not gonna you're not gonna know and and the other thing i, I had jotted down to get and cover before the q a was the, the the psychiatry is a really really dark field like there's there's people who have literally been tortured and you know there's creepy movies like the girl with the dragon tattoo and there's a, there's a thing in New Zealand where like they're actually doing like a huge royal commission into some hospital Lake Alice like a hospital and these people were taken there as children because they were problem children or whatever and all sorts of horrific things happen to them and they're now getting apologies from the government on behalf of the psychiatrist that was there like 20 years later or however long ago it was the guy who the psychiatrist in question is like he lives in australia now conveniently not not saying why that could be um and and these people had the you know like totally really messed up experiences and it seems to be a recurring theme like i I don't see any i don't hardly hear any stories of psychiatric drugs being um life-changing for the better (laughs) for people it's either you got munted or you just didn't get hit that badly it's just it's just to what degree it it harmed you and there's a lot of people out there who who don't who don't get don't 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 feel harmed at all by it and to them i would say and they'll probably think we're idiots and they would say but the thing is they don't know what they would have been without it they don't know what they're missing out on and and I guarantee it is having an effect on your brain that is negative. And, you know, you, there's no way to deny that because we know the effect it has. It's just how well you cope with it. And the truth is really hard to get out on this because if you try to post anything like this on Reddit and the ADHD, they'll just delete the post or just shut you down. Uh, when I post it on Instagram and put in all those hashtags, people were just like slamming me in the comments section. I had a lot of support as well. People just like, how do you say this? People, people get so that they've they've identified that they've got an identity attached to this condition, and they're letting that hold them back. And yeah, I think that's a good segue. We've done an hour. We'll go into some <laughs> questions. That was awesome. Yeah, no, the censorship is real, and I've been getting my hand slapped. Like I can't go live on Instagram anymore. Um, <laughs> looks like permanently and uh, every time i post about methylene blue they treat me like a drug dealer and i've been i think three or four of my methylene blue not even post stories were flagged and i'll put a link to a study and i you know i don't i'm not you know this isn't for an affiliate thing or whatever but wherever you get methylene blue it does affect um, your behavior and there's a lot of clinical human research on it um and a lot of these solutions are suppressed. Like you said, they just delete your post or whatever on Reddit. That I think people don't realize that, that there's this system in place that's like really squashing these solutions, these tools that actually can help people that are really cheap. I mean, that are way more affordable than these pharmaceutical drugs. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's so true, like the censorship thing, because it's like finding these, this sort of podcast or our pages or similar pages is like a new world. It's like a, you, you, you open up to a new world. And until you find it, you don't even know it exists. And I'm sure like seven years ago or whatever, when I was, you know, over the years before I realized this, before I got into natural health, I would have like, I would have looked on, on those websites. And, and I just obviously, but it's obviously completely managed so you you don't you you the chance of you randomly finding the truth is close to zero if you look in the wrong places and and those websites they'll just say oh he's anti-psychiatry they just like use like a, a, gen, a generic like label he's anti-psychiatry um or he's a quack or unqualified i had a story so i interviewed michael corrigan who's a professor in i think he's either west virginia or another part of america he he put out a book called I'll find the the name, but he put out a book on ADHD called uh, Debunking ADHD: Ten Reasons to Stop Drugging Your Kids. Um, 
for acting like kids. And he he when he put out that book or another book, he was getting negative reviews on Amazon before the book was even published. Oh. How is that possible? How would you read it to give negative reviews? So he was getting negative reviews, and he t- he told me that when when he when he goes to like speak at certain places, the pharmaceutical companies will send in people to go and ask like hard questions or throw data at him. Like it's wow. it's it's just a big sham. I mean, I don't understand how those people can live with themselves doing what they're doing. But yeah, let's go with the questions. Yeah, one. Maybe they're not human. Maybe they're AI, <laughs> AI hecklers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I I've been into the AI thing. Supposedly, a lot of the trolls we get online could not could be not even people, like on that level. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. Creepy. Sure. <laughs> um, sure. Just to like distract and just to take up your time. Um, someone asked, "Are there any links between autism and ADHD?" I would just say in the sense that I think I think autism is not like ADHD. Autism is its own legitimate condition. And but now that they've heard what I've said so far, I think they should understand that there is no such thing as ADHD. Um, but they can say you could say that, you know, a lot of the autism, like maybe mild autism symptoms could be diagnosed as ADHD, that, that could happen. Uh, so in that sense, yes, and there's probably overlap in the symptoms, but um, there's probably nothing more to read into it other than let those autism symptoms guide you to figure out what you need to work on or what your child needs to work on. Um, is there any gender differences, like different symptoms that males will experience and females will experience? Yeah, so we kind of touched on it before with the, um, what's his name, Thomas Armstrong's article, uh, boys are diagnosed at four times as often as females. The main reason for the situation has to do with normal gender differences. So, yeah, m- males are more likely to get the diagnosis because they're more, like, boy- boyish behavior is, is like, lines up with ADHD diagnosis. So, uh, the, the traits, the supposed characteristics. So, I mean, yeah. In, in that sense, yes. Um, let's see. How to improve focus without stimulant medication? Yeah, that's a good one. So I'll find uh, my whole list. Um, but I would, I would say, yeah, it's not. Don't try to think of it. It'll be like a one thing solution. You'll want to. Mm work on all aspects of your health with light exposure, EMF, your mindset, your diet. So the diet that I would not recommend, but just shares the sort of diet that I, that I like to think most people would benefit from is something along the lines of a Western A price style diet, maybe that you minus the bread, uh, like grains temporarily just to see what difference it makes. Um, it, It may make no difference in which case go back to, having it as you as you see fit um you experiment with and without pasteurized dairy if you can get raw dairy but but the staples would be you want to include you know red meat um and you know good quality eggs the yolks raw if you can handle that um don't overcook the steaks because you know i think one of the other things i didn't mention is that I've been mainly talking about child ADHD, but um, adult ADHD is the new market. It's the new market that pharmaceutical companies have created. So they're getting adults to diagnose themselves. They're not getting them to, but people are doing it. And uh, it's the new fad. It's like go to the doctor and get, um, as a 37-year-old, get an ADHD diagnosis. And the drugs then help you and, and make you feel better. And so, and then that person, the thing with that person is if you drug a, an eight-year-old, you wreck them so that they will like wake up. I think that means you're more likely to wake up like I did. But if you get someone at 37, they've had a relatively normal development up until now. So they'll just run with it. They'll just go with the flow and you've got them as a client for however many years you want. So, and the reason I bring that up now is possibly I would, I would, I would say that maybe some of the adult ADHD is simply just veganism. Like 
<laughs> what if it's just what if it's just you what if it's just you're missing like key nutrients i'll probably get hate for that please don't please don't hate me for that but i'm just saying but it's something to consider you know what if you're just missing key animal nutrients um what if just something to consider yeah and, uh, sorry yeah, the so retinol the B vitamins yeah yeah answering right. the question was they asked how to improve focus so basic diet stuff Reduce blue light, blue light, add in red light, more sunlight, reduce EMF, grounding, get in nature, um, find out what distracts you and reduce that. Find out what gets you into a flow state, increase more of that, adjust your workplace if you can, adjust your home desk space, adjust your lifestyle, just experiment. If you want to go into supplements, this is something I have looked into that I haven't found in one place online. The things I'll just read off some of the lists. There's a ginseng, has some, there's some validity there. Rhodiola, uh, passion flowers, more like calming, but for some people, calming can help with focus because then you're you're less like in an intense state. Um, ginkgo biloba is also recommended. l tyrosine's a bit synthetic, but it's also been recommended. Um, guarana, L-theanine. What else? Is, oh, then there's more synthetic ones like phosphol phospholiterine or something, phosphodiserine um nac l glutamine oh, phosphacetyl serine yeah <laughs> I, actually, I wouldn't really recommend ashwagandha there's there's a whole list and i can i can make the post online but the ones i said at the cool. start would probably be the ones to look at ginseng rhodiola passion flower ginkgo guarana l-theanine l-tyrosine yeah awesome yeah it seems like there's a dopamine connection with attention right um like I have a YouTube yeah, so video back a, when I was doing my, uh, my ice baths. With, yeah. The main thing Sorry, that screws way. with is your dopamine receptors. That's mm. that's the main thing the drug messes with. But then that has a flow on effect to your other neurotransmitters. Interesting. Yeah, and tyrosine is the precursor to dopamine. So I could see how that can help, especially with UV stimulus. That would be a good synergy. Mm. And you were showing me before we started recording, you have like a headset because there's the device route, right? Besides supplements that people could use yeah, yeah, for focus. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah this isn't on video, but and I'll, I've made a couple, no, I've maybe only done like one or two posts on Instagram about it. But uh, if you've got the money, I wouldn't definitely wouldn't do this first um, unless you've got heaps of money available. Um, but you can look into, th there is some free ones online, but you can look into the Tomatis method. So T-O-M-A-T-I-S method. It's by a French ENT, you know, throat specialist. He was around like, I don't I think he started this in the fifties or sixties and it's developed into like an international company with, uh, practitioners all around the world. There's like 10 or more in New Zealand. I've met one and spoken with a couple on the phone. And the angle they look at, that, that's sort of part of the crowd. They won't really tell people to their face ADHD doesn't exist, um, but, they, but they're helping people with their ADHD and they'll get to the point where they won't need the drugs. And, and, then, and not just ADHD, a whole range of, of childhood things. And basically their approach is um, music, mostly like Mozart, string instruments um, with these special headphones that cost around... 250 US dollars and if you want to get a personalized program it costs even more but the personalized program they actually assess your ears the difference between your right and left which frequencies are heard to what degree and then they make a personalized program for you and that this headset it has bone conduction at the top so the bit that rests on your top of your head is bone conduction and then you've got the ears getting regular sound and it switches between bone conduction sending the sound via bone conduction and by sound to the ear and they've they've had heaps of amazing amazing stories of of not like not just adhd all sorts of things so it's it's a company worth looking into i i think they're great people the people i've interacted with them are, are great they 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 mean well and um but don't look at that first because it, it's pricey and mm. also you need to address the diet stuff. You need to reduce toxins. You need to work on the light and all those things. But Tomatoes Smith is one. And I'm, I'm sure there's others like um, 
you know, some of the things that you've played around with, Matt, I'm sure some of them could be good for the diagnosis stage. Like that one that I can't remember the name of it, but it like had the, it does the auras around the body. You remember the one you posted it on the stories a few times? Oh, it's like the, the bio there. well. I don't remember the name, but you know, Is something it... like that might be good to check out someone's emotional state. Yeah. The gas discharge visualization camera by a, uh, Konstantin Karatkov. Yeah, the um, BioWell. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So does the Tomatis connect to an iPod or something or is the music in it, like integrated in the headphones? Yeah, the itself? music's in it. The music's in it. Yeah, it, it oh, does have okay. a, a plug to connect when you've got the personalized program. Because with the personalized program, you don't get that on your phone either. You get that on this little like cue and you plug mm. the headset into that. Um, and I haven't done the personalized program, but I have, I did get my ears tested by them and it was really interesting to see like the difference in my ears. My right side is missing some, some not, not catching some frequencies. Like it's a, it's a quite a big difference. Wow. Yeah. My brother <laughs> is really into heavy metal. He's a bass player and he took me to like, you know, my first Megadeth, my first Metallica concert, you know, Lamb of God, Slayer. And fortunately, I wore ear earplugs every concert because it was deafening the sound. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'm sure that's you know one too many concerts or shows. You know, I think people forget that that ringing in the ears is isn't it like your like the last time you'll ever hear that frequency. I don't know if that's a myth, but it's a pretty strong effect to destroy your ears if you're not wearing uh, protection at a concert. <laughs> yeah. So it's, again, it's, I mean, for some people that could be a contributing cause to, to what they're going through and, and they wouldn't know it. Yeah. You know, my dad's had tinnitus for a while from shooting without, uh, and he, he forgot to put on his headset in an indoor shooting range. And tinnitus seems to be like a epidemic from what I've seen. Just like everyone has tinnitus. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm noticing that a lot. Like, and I think that I would say the EMF is probably making that worse. But, but also obvious stuff mm -hmm. like just loud, loud sounds. Mm -hmm. Um, let me see. <laughs> How to get tested as an adult for adult ADHD? Go find a psychiatrist. So, yeah, this, this is the sort of person <laughs> they, they, they mean well. They mean well. I mean, you you want help and you think you've found the thing. You don't you don't want this diagnosis. You don't need a, a negative label. And it is a negative label. A, a disorder can only be a negative thing. It's a it's a pejorative. It, own, it, 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 it can never be twisted to mean a good thing. So uh, it's not helpful to have the diagnosis unless maybe there's some situation no, I can't think of any situation where it would be where it would be helpful to have the diagnosis. So, um, yeah, by now that person will have heard the the first half of the podcast, and hopefully they they understand the perspective I'm coming from. D uh, does Tylenol taken during pregnancy contribute to it? I guess to a child being born with these yeah, issues. Yeah, I, I have heard I have heard that, but regardless of hearing it or not i would just say like it's yeah i mean it's just common it's not common sense but it's like anything that we take and ingest in our bodies and put in our bodies that's quite unnatural has a risk of causing a an un, you know having a side effect or having um you know a flow on effect to the baby if you're pregnant so you know don't beat yourself up over it and get annoyed about it there's no it's no big deal and um but it, it it may have been a contributing it may be a contributing factor but it's been and gone but now you know now maybe you can look into what specific effect that has and then that might give you clues for what you need to undo it mm -hmm. um does not sleeping properly snoring position etc contribute to adhd symptoms 100 percent. i reckon that's that's possible. I'm pretty sure even on some of the lip tape websites, they might even allude to that. They've got to be careful what they say, but I'm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. And Sarah Hornsby, I'm pretty sure she might have alluded to that as well. So not putting words in their mouth. I'm just saying, I think, I think I may have heard that from those people, but it, it just, again, it just makes sense. You're not going to get as, 
as deep of a sleep as high quality of a sleep and therefore you're going to be more like tired or irrit irritable and then that could be the thing that's contributing to your distractiveness or uh, lack of focus or, or whatever the symptom is so yeah lip tape can be helpful um i've got some here i i you want to be careful with those i've, I've got to do a video about them because i once twice i've woken up with the lip tape in my mouth and i've and i've and i've been like panicking that i that i swallowed it or something but then like i found it in the bed i found it in the bed and other times i was like if i didn't swallow it so like <laughs> what i do now is I, I put the lip tape on and then i put like hardcore tape over top of it if, if i am using it i don't use it regularly anymore so that i know it won't come off but um that's just that's just me being uh maybe that's my ocd or <laughs> but just just a side note on, on that update. but yeah getting a high quality yeah. sleep is is obviously going to help with reducing those symptoms yeah mine's been pretty bad because i moved from idaho to colorado in the last week and it's so dry up here and it could be a combo of the elevation but I've been doing a lot of experiments, um, like I re-added in a humidifier, especially being on grid again, because I have unlimited power. Um, and that really helps just having a humidifier going, but we ordered a EMF blocking that black, I think it's graph, graphite. Um, yeah, graphite based mm -hmm. EMF blocking paint, um, that blocks from a certain amount of decibel range. We're going to paint the whole bedroom in that. Now I think they even have EMF blocking curtains like Defender Shield cells. And there's really endless uh, EMF mitigation. It just gets so pricey if you're talking about paint mm. and curtains and stuff like that. Um, yeah. And even the scalar devices. I mean, you, you end up spending a lot of money mitigating this stuff. <laughs> so. mm. um, is there anything moms can do to that can help reduce the risk of the child um developing adhd like symptoms while the baby is in the womb do you say hit it with red light <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i mean obviously with pregnancy stuff it's like you've got to be ultra careful what you say because it's even more you know the rules around saying things and, and giving advice and things but uh, you know it would just be the same kind of stuff that we've been getting on it now it'd be just reducing subtracting and reducing as best as possible the bad things which the things that we know are bad the toxic things and increasing the things that we know uh, are beneficial and and then having peace of mind that you're doing your best so i mean if you're if you're a mother that is concerned about the risk of you know you sound like the a great mother already and like you're on the right track so you just need to know the the specifics and you know maybe look at the western a price foundation or Look at the information Matt shared or the information I've shared, um, like around blue light. Make sure you you know you're covering all your bases, and um, I'm sure it'll be fine. This is a really good one. Is it possible for gifted kids to be misdiagnosed as ADHD? Is it just high IQ not being challenged? Yeah. So i've heard lots of different theories like that even someone posting on twitter i think they said that it was an aristocratic trait which i thought was quite funny um <laughs> <laughs> the, the the in that list of conditions that mimic um gifted children are on there and in that it does put above average iq and and some people will kind of run with that and go oh sweet so i'm adhd i'm above average in IQ and it doesn't work like that though because like I was saying at the start the filter is so wide for the number for the amount of people the range of people that can get this um give, get given this quote-unquote condition uh is, is so wide ranging that you know you could be and there's nothing wrong with being below average IQ 50% of the population is below average IQ and you can still have a great life too and it's uh but you know, there'll be people in that section that get the diagnosis for a nutritional issue or for a family issue or for, you know, personal emotional issue or because the school, the school system's stuffed or, or they're under exercised, you know. And so you can't, you can't really say, oh, it's this or that, but it is definitely possible. I would say it's definitely possible, not just because it's on that list, but because I've heard it in other places and it makes sense to me. And, and I've been, you know, looking into this stuff for ages. It, it definitely makes sense to me that you could be understimulated and irritated uh at the pace and and that irritation could 
be diagnosed. Uh, how do you communicate with someone who has ADHD symptoms? Sounds like in a relationship. <laughs> uh, so I guess, yeah, first thing is, wait, did they actually word it as ADHD symptoms or was that you adding that in? They worded it as that, yeah. Oh, okay, cool. So I mean, so that means they they must be kind of awake to the fact that it's not necessarily a, a you know a permanent brain disorder and that it's a, a type of symptom, which is good. So they're on the right track there. How do you communicate with them? Um, <laughs> I guess you need to ask someone who communicates with me. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm just kidding. But I, I think you could. Yeah, I I don't think. It, I don't think that there would be like a, a simple, you know, one size fits all answer to that question, just for the same reason I said before with the, the IQ topic. I think, you know, just treat people nicely. And uh, yeah. if what you've done so far isn't working, try try something else. Uh, it's an interesting question, but it's so hard to answer. <laughs> yeah, I'd imagine, like you said, the Weston A. Price kind of stuff minus cod liver oil obviously, and <laughs> getting the animal nutrients to the brain probably helps everything, including Yeah, that's a, good point. that's a good point. Like, you're actually going around the problem there. So if you have trouble communicating with this person that you, maybe it's a child or a family member or in a relationship, then maybe you work on their diet for them and then the communication improves. You, you could, they could work. Maybe you, you know, chuck a bit of raw liver into their, into their smoothie. I'm just kidding. Um, who, who yeah. knows? Just, you, but yeah, that, I mean, that what you said there could be good to, to work on the other things and, and the communication will improve. Or 50 uh, raw egg yolks and shot glasses. Have you seen that video? Again, people do <laughs> No, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, it's like the primal, this 50 egg yolks at a time or something. It's kind of crazy. But, <laughs> um, what about Sheila Jeet for ADHD? Have you seen that help? Or, or for, you know, quote, unquote? Yeah, I mean, I've, <laughs> I've had your one. I've had your one and another one. And just as a side note, your one is better because it's swallowable <laughs> rather than the powder. Um, I mean, to me, again, that just falls into generic things that are going to be good for health for most people. Um, and the, the mineral deficiency could be a thing. It would be bad for me to say, oh, everyone who's got this should try it out, should try it out, because there's other things you can do in your daily life first, but it's something to consider. It's something to consider. And if you don't, and if it doesn't work for you, don't throw it out. Use it on your garden. I've, I've heard of people throwing it out. Don't do that. Or your dog, right? For me, like, the like cure-all for dogs True. and cats is like vitamin E, gelatin, shield G. <laughs> nice. You need a new protocol for me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, so this is a controversial one. Um, we're far enough in, so hopefully the bots don't get us. Uh, do you think the ADHD diagnosis is a vaccine entry? <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, if you're going to have things in the body that, that contain, you know, toxic ingredients, things that, we, you know, we would all generally agree are toxic. Um, it's not beyond the realm of possibility to think that those toxic ingredients are contributing to brain issues. So, yes, it, it could be it could be the case that that has contributed to the symptoms. But but then it would be weird. The other problem with that argument is that it depends what age they're talking about. Because if it's like vaccines at birth. Well, you are never going to notice the symptoms or even try to diagnose a child at age six months or nine months or or eighteen months. So, so then, how would you, you know, if you if the diagnosis happens at age six, then there's a lot's happened between now and then. So you can't, you know, there's a lot of other variables to consider. Just on that note, one thing I would I would add that's quite interesting is um, in America, I've heard that there's actually psychiatrists trying to diagnose like preschool students with ADHD, like eight, four year olds, even four and five year olds. It's really insane. Like it's, it's not enough to just get the six and seven and eight year olds. They're going to go lower. Um, bizarre. Anyway. 
hope that helps. That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> could trauma be a cause of ADHD? Someone asked her that diagnosis. Sorry, the sound cut out about there. Would you say, can trauma be a cause? Oh, of uh, being diagnosed with ADHD? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure it could. I mean, that fits into some of the emotional things that they listed on riffleanddeath.com mm. and and also just common, not common sense, but like a holistic view of, of health and human beings. Like, um, you know, there's that, there's, yeah, you could go down a huge rabbit hole there with like auric fields and like the Barbara Brennan type stuff, mm. if anyone's into that. Um, and even, you know, the, the effect words can have on people um, and repeated words. So like, even in a sense, just just telling a child that they have a disorder, as long as they're smart enough to understand that disorder is a negative thing, that's casting a like a negative spell on them. You know, that, that's, a, that's an insult. It's an insult. Um, to say that someone has a, has a disorder. So, yeah, fat, trauma 100% could be contributor. Um, is it obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, related to uh, ADHD? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's in the, it's one of the, um, it's one of the acronyms they like to throw around. Like, I think that guy Grant Cardone said that he was diagnosed with ADD, ODD, and OCD. I don't know if he, he's just <laughs> stretching the truth to make a point in a video, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if there's a child out there that has all three of those. You know, I had two of them, so I was one off um, <laughs> getting OCD. So, yeah, it, it is possible. And OCD is probably an interesting one, probably needs more of its own research, but I would say it's something to do with, like, you know, it's it's something to do with over focusing. It's it's probably some maybe it's like an angry thing. I don't know, like it's wanting to get to the bottom of something. The other thing is uh, another thing to to this to, to sort of cover for ADHD that that um, I didn't really say, haven't really said so far, is that it's a way of looking at things. So if you look at the world where um, obedience is virtuous then defiance is an illness and many of the doctors and psychiatrists they grew up in their early adult life being extremely like fitting the mold fitting in in order to progress through university you don't you don't challenge the paradigm it doesn't go down well doing that usually um they say that science you know evolves as someone dies you know when when as if someone dies, then then people are allowed to start questioning things and, and, and new topics and 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 so with ADHD, like you know, you, you could look at it. There's a there's positive ways of looking at it as well. Um, you know, active. Uh, I think there's another there's a contrary acronym. It's vast. I need to I can just see if I can quickly find it. Um, but yeah, what's it say? A variable attention stimulus trait. So that's someone else has coined that term. But the person who coined that term is part of what I would define as the not controlled opposition, but like the mainstream alternative. So he he's putting a positive spin on it, but he's still not challenging the root cause. But um, it's a, it's a step in the right direction, and if it helps people, it helps people. Absolutely. Um, I don't I don't know if we talked about Adderall earlier, but we had a few questions on that. Someone said. I'm a therapist uh, with many clients on Adderall for years. What does he recommend? Um, obviously not as a doctor. <laughs> and then someone asked, what damage can come from someone taking Adderall for a year if they really didn't need it? Uh, well, there's an interesting thing there. So I'll try to do the second one first because it's the one you just most recently said. But mm -hmm. if they really didn't need it, that's kind of funny because no one needs it. So... <laughs> if they really didn't need it as it that, that's that implies that some people do need it but so because that's another one of the kind of parts of the scam is that they'll say that oh no no no, this toxic thing is actually good for that person's brain because they've got a brain disorder it helps them but if it's taken by their friend at school it's dangerous that's literally what they'll say like if, if i if i at nine years old had given the drug to someone else it would have been harmful for them but it was okay for me makes no sense um so what was the full question it was What's the damage it could cause after one year? 
Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not that much. Hopefully I think one year is not that bad. It also, the, the way I would judge the damage would be the earlier they start, the higher the dose and the longer they're on it. So someone who takes it at age 24 for one year gets less damage than someone who takes it at age seven for one year. Someone who takes it at age seven with a dose of twice per day gets more damage than someone who takes it from age seven once per day. That's the sort of logic of how I would assess the damage. Um, There's no point, you know, getting annoyed about it. It's the past, you know, this person's had it for a year or they know someone's had it for a year. It probably has had some effect, but, you know, you're onto it to catch it now at one year. So just look on the bright side and and look at the different natural ways of working on your health. And they, they probably, they may need like professional help to to get themselves off it slowly. Uh, but you need to be careful there because you want to find a professional who actually cares and who will actually help you get off it because there are ones that might not help you get off it. And then what was the first right. one? There was the therapist who's got lots of clients on Adderall for years. Yeah, and what what did what does Tane recommend instead? Yeah, it's not like one for one. I mean, if, if you look at the supplement list that I that of things that I've looked into and some of them that I've experimented with, some of those might help as like a one for one. Might I I really don't know because I haven't experimented with them that way because I haven't been on any of the stimulants for for so long. But so that you could look at that. You you could look at those lists, but as a therapist, you probably can't prescribe those supplements anyway. So, what? Yeah, you, you. The other thing is, as as much health information you give someone, if someone doesn't want to get off it themselves, you can't take them off. You can't force them to get off it unless they're a child, you know, under someone's parental guidance, right? They're like a guardian, right? So, you know, that's what you need. You need to make sure they want to get off it first. Um, and and for that, I guess the 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 establishment friendly way of doing that. There's an un, there's a there's a provocative way of doing that, but the establishment friendly way of doing that would be just be to simply show them the side effects lists that are available mm-hmm. on the FDA or whichever other country you're in. Just look at get the lists, get the full lists. Maybe maybe combine them from different from the different drugs so you can kind of get a, a bigger picture, or, or I mean, make sure it's specific to the one that they're taking, and. Um, you know, you can also look up statistics in terms of the people people who have suffered issues and and um, people who have died from it, especially if it's a child. That's really, really, really important. I, I think it's less common than an adult will die from it, but a child, um, that has happened. So, yeah, you need to work on making sure they want to get off it and then giving them the help to get off it. It's probably not going to be like, oh, have passion flower in, play, in replace of your Adderall and they'll just go along with it. If it's someone you know and you're mm-hmm. friends with them and you, you're just having a conversation, then you could look at something like that. But uh, withdrawal is a big issue. That, that wasn't an issue for me. I, I somehow just sort of, I kind of just got off it. Just, I wasn't really thinking much about it at the time. I just thought, oh, I don't want to take it anymore. But for some people, it can be a real big issue when they come off it so mm-hmm. um be wary of that it's it'll be a process awesome yeah i think uh, for me my perspective currently is that it's going to be a combination of like dietary stuff supplements and technology or devices um like i think the the brain stimulation devices could be very helpful and neurofeedback even more so for a lot of people for various, various things, just overall health. Um, but I think it's kind of the combination that gives the best effect. Yeah. But even then, like one of the things that Peter Bregan has said, someone asked him kind of a question like this at a, at a conference, a parent asked him like, Oh, what about this thing? Like she, the mom was like really into natural health and she had all this stuff she was working on for her son. But and again, he would say that like, you're still treating the child as if there's something wrong with them. Mm. Um, so, I mean, what you said there could be like guaranteed truth for maybe healing from the damage from the drug. But if they haven't had mm. damage from the drug, then the problem could be as simple as like some sort of family therapy thing or um, mm. the, the mum and dad um, interacting with each other differently in the home when the child's around or 
you know, it could be as something kind of not fickle, but to us that always mm-hmm. look into like the things, it could be something like that. It could be, it could be counseling. And, and one of the other kind of conspiracies about this is that counseling um, and therapists were big for a while in the 70s, 80s, and, and then the psychiatry supposedly kind of realized they needed to take some of that market share away from them. And, and so that's, so the drug wow. approach has kind of repl- has taken off some of the counseling that was um, once more common. Um, I'm sure I'll get hate for that, but it's, that's, that's <laughs> what I've heard. I've heard multiple people share that multiple people like much older than me that were probably around to properly research that. Like there was like a shift. There was a, people would be going to therapists and counselors and, and psychologists for some things, which, and then psychiatry became bigger. And apparently it was because psychiatry was resentful that they were not making as much money as some of the other medical fields. <laughs> I don't know how much truth there is to that, but, wow. you know, I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't say it's, it's not true. Yeah, I liked what you said. Maybe it's just more outdoor time too, because I notice indoor life is much different stimulation with like the screens and the flicker and the blue light and the social media. It's a, it's a different, it's stimulation, but it's, a, I think, an unhealthier one probably to like going on a walk and seeing all the plants and having to watch for wild animals that are going to eat you, right? It's like a different yeah, kind well, maybe of that's, that's brain part activation. Of the, the, um, the Thomas Hartman's Hunter and a Farmer's Society or whatever, hunt, mm-hmm. you know, that's maybe there's some element to that part there, but that doesn't apply to everyone, but it would for some. Mm-hmm. The, the way I would summarize it is that, you know, if someone comes to me and say, hey, can you, I know you know about natural health, can you give me some information on what I should work on? I would have a list like 10 pages long or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then if someone said, I think I have ADHD or I've been on these drugs, what could you, what should I do? I would still have that same 10 pages, but I would, there would be, you know, two to four or whatever of them that I would 20 to 40% of what's on those 10 pages that I would think of oh, these are the things you should probably try first because they're more likely to mm. be suitable or, or urgent for your needs. And, but, but the same things that are good for there, there are many things that are good for everyone's health that everyone can look into and, and, and get started on. Mm-hmm. Um, are tongue ties related to ADD? Um, if so, why and how have you looked into that? <laughs> That's a cool question. Um, I have had I had a very very minor one that I got done with like a water laser when I got my amalgam fillings taken out by the same guy, really good holistic dentist. Um, I hadn't noticed any issue, and I don't think like it's affected my facial development much. Um, I just have a friend in, in Australia who's really into all that stuff. And so we talked about it and then I was like, oh, well, I might as well just get it checked. And I, um, but it could be the, it could be the case that, cause, cause breathing is so important, right? So stuffed up breathing and, you know, all hell could break you loose. You know, you've got a, so many different things that could spawn from that, the inability to breathe clearly when sleeping and during the daytime. So, yeah, I would say, yes, it could contribute. How it would be simply the fact that it's obstructing, um, you know, or it's, or it's, or it's, it's affecting the way you breathe. Have you ever heard of someone using thyroid medication for ADD symptoms? <laughs> no, I mean, well, I know, yes, I have. And, and it was on that list, it, you know, hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism on that list, but it wasn't one of the things that I had thought of early on I, I i it slipped my mind for ages i never until i read it i didn't think that that would be a, a thing I, I don't actually know much about the thyroid um other than some people get theirs unfortunately removed by by the medical system um uh but yeah i i really pass on that one like i think i think it could it could it could but yeah i don't i don't really get how that how that would affect it. Do you have any info on that? Like how thyroid issue could contribute? I I know Dr. Ray Pete recommends thyroid like like candy. And I think it can be helpful if someone's eating, you know, liver and oysters and eggs and red meat. 
and nutrient dense foods consistently, but I think it can cause harm if they're not. And I think he emphasizes that as it increases your nutrient requirements. So retinol and animal protein, B vitamins, copper, and all of it. Um, yeah, I played around with T3 synthetic Sinomel and definitely felt a benefit. Um, I kind of lost it in the move, so I need to find it again. I haven't felt anything from desiccated thyroid like I have from the synthetic stuff. And I think it's relatively safe in my opinion, not recommending it. But um, it, it, from what I've read, it's very safe um, as long as you're not overdoing it, you know. Um, but this is kind of on the same yeah, topic. Say, Someone asked like, about – oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was just going to add um... – um, I, I like all the questions. I want to do, do as many of them as possible. Um, but I was just going to quickly say that the what the situation I can imagine happening is someone hears this and then they're like, oh, okay. And then they go on a big um, hunt for, I mean, if they go literally hunting for thyroid, that would be cool. But um, don't, don't like go super, super obsessive about now getting thyroid. Just all organ meat is, is nutritious, especially the heart and liver. And if you can get liver, just, just go with that. Um, don't let thyroid be the first thing that you you take from this to, to to look into. I mean, the first thing everyone should have, if they haven't already from listening to my rants on Instagram, is they should have Uvex, Uvex Sky for blue blocking glasses. So that's, that should be the first thing you buy after listening to this. But yeah, let's go next question. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I've been, I haven't been talking about it much, and people can't see it on camera, but I've been playing with the near-infrared bulbs and – I played with them years ago and it definitely has a different effect from the, the red LEDs, but I've really been enjoying it. Mm. Um, especially being on grid and not having to worry about insane amount of wattage consumption, which these do. <laughs> yeah. um, someone asked about nootropics for focus and you kind of touched on it a little bit, but what do you think about like lion's mane and um, you mentioned passion Yeah, yeah. So on my list and, of, um, I have a massive list that's, I can share, probably I should share on my Instagram um, of things that I've just like copied and pasted. Well, read, and if I like what I read, I copied and pasted into a Word document of different different supplements. And nootropics, like the old me would have been like, oh, that's like synthetic people who want to take, you know, these substances to improve their study and stuff. I don't need that. But it's a really, it, it is an interesting area. It's an interesting field. And there are lots of natural things in there for the people that want to one hundred percent avoid synthetic things. I, I like I was saying before, uh, apart from L theanine and L tyrosine, all the ones I've got are uh, just like raw herbs turned into a you know, a powder or, or something like that or a capsule. But there there are there are lots. Um yeah, I can read off a few more. There's like the five H T P. I haven't tried that one. Go to cola, carva carva. Um, skull cap. That so that's another natural one. Um, yeah. Oh, the other thing I would recommend people. Um, sorry, not recommend because that's against the rules. But just look at. Um, I think you've got a you've got a zinc. You've got an oyster one, right? Mm -hmm. An oyster product, oyster powder. Yeah. I think that would mm -hmm. be good for people to consider, especially guys. Just get get some more zinc. Um. And then make sure you've got like a, a place to use that energy, you know, doing some exercise or sport or or your work or whatever. I think um, there, there there are things, like I've said this whole time, that are generally, people generally aren't getting enough of and, and zinc's probably one of them. But So I would add that in there. And, and, and here's the thing, that's why if you just pigeonhole into nootropics, you probably wouldn't find an oyster supplement or shilajit because none of those forums mention those. They all mention other things. Um so yeah, new tropics is an area worth looking into, but don't get don't get like narrow minded into thinking that that's where your solution yeah. will be. Right. Yeah, I remember Dave Asper years ago talking about a modafinil or provigil a lot and how that helped him. <laughs> the anti narcolepsy pharmaceutical. <laughs> yeah. That one sounds dodgy to me. <laughs> uh someone asked, is microdosing helpful? I guess they're referring to psychedelics. It's like, yeah, so there's a, you know, a crowd that are into that sort of thing. I have not had any experience with that. And it, it, to me, it seems really, really unlikely that you're going to get meaningful long-term changes from a one-off event or even doing it several times. I think 
there's so many more things you need to be doing daily or hourly. Like, what if your breathing's not right? What if your blue light's not right? And, you know, what if your sunlight exposure is not right? What if you're not getting enough um, nutrient dense animal foods? What if your water filter, like, get you. So, to, to that, that sounds like one of those bro, bro podcasts, bro, you need to do a, you need a trip, you need to do a trip or whatever. Um, and, and I've got friends who have done like the ayahuasca and, and, and they're into that sort of stuff. And I think there's a, there's a place for that. Um, um, cause that's like a social thing as well, apparently, you know, like they do a bonfire or whatever. Um, but yeah, that I, I would stay, I would stay steer clear of the idea that, that of, of the, yeah, the tripping or whatever, uh, what's it called? Um, psychedelics, um, would, would be like microdosing would be the game changer for you. Yeah. I think they're, from my research, they're as potentially harmful as pharmaceuticals, and that's going to piss off a lot of people to hear that. But, you know, beyond that mm-hmm. little soundbite, my point there is that, you know, it, they are stimulants in a way. And I've seen that in people, um, how they affect the nervous system and create jitters and stuff. And um, I don't know, MAPS and Rick Doblin have good information, uh, clinical studies on like, magic mushrooms, you know, um, improving, uh, brain connectivity. But I think people go to that first and they tend to take too much instead of, you know, getting the basic things down, like you've been talking about before going to that. Like, I think that's a very advanced therapy that shouldn't be gone to first. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, honestly, I feel like it's a psyop, like the um, (laughs) microdosing, just, just, just looking at the type of people that are promoting it and their audience size, it, to me, it comes across as a sale. Right. Yeah. I forget there was a guy that was talking about that. I was trying to get him on my podcast a while back that he talked about how the whole psychedelic movement was a psyop. Um, shoot. Maybe his name will come. <laughs> I love talking about that. Remember. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's good to just keep an open mind that it could be because when you, whenever you see something being promoted heavily, like to me, that zinc, omega threes, ascorbic acid, vitamin D, iron, like you have to start to question, you know, is this good for us? In my opinion. Yeah. It's, it's very rare that something <laughs> genuinely good is promoted in the mainstream. Mm hmm. Yeah, aspirin gets a highlight here and there, but <laughs> yeah, true that one. Uh, um, someone asked, "Can magnesium help?" A hundred percent. I mean, it's but I, I will be careful in terms of you know, there's I won't give his name to give him a, a shout out, but the there, there are people out there who who mention that it is careful. We, we've got to be careful in terms of saying the one size fits all, and that includes things mm-hmm. like the oyster and the shilajit mm-hmm. and the magnesium mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. that doesn't mean you can't say for most people it's worth giving it a try and that's like it's always like a, a cost benefit analysis on whether you purchase something that is going to help your health but like a magnesium chloride gel or a magnesium chloride spray and you put it on your feet or you put, made it make a foot bath with it a foot bath wouldn't really be efficient use of it but if that's what you want to do that's what you want to do or putting it on your wrists, or if you can tolerate it on the on your neck or something, that that to me is a low risk, potentially high reward thing to do for your health. If if especially if you live far from the ocean, um, right. So it, I, I would I would say mm-hmm. yeah, magnesium can help. Um, be careful of things like oh, this is a magnesium supplement, you know, and it's has all the forms. I mean, you could try it. You could you could try it. I mean, and I think you've got one eh, for magnesium, but like just the soon, yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's amino acid chelated forms. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'll say that again. Yeah, I'm coming out with an amino acid chelated form soon, but yeah, I totally agree that we shouldn't look for one, you know, cure alls or one, you know, uh, silver bullet. I guess they call it right. Um, but and, it can't hurt to get a magnesium. magnesium bicarbonate video as well. Right. That's what I always mm-hmm. recommend. People make it yourself because it's like pennies. You know, it's like mm-hmm. ozone therapy. It's so cheap. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think magnesium and copper are involved in like at least three or four out of the five um, respiratory proteins in the mitochondria um, and the electron transport chain. So that's pretty profound. And I know Douglas C. Wallace at the Children's Hospital, he, you know, the mitochondrial uh, expert, world's expert, he says a lot of these, a lot of the chronic conditions are just caused by energy deficiency in mitochondria. And I think that's an unexplored area with a lot of these, you know, conditions, it's just you're not making enough energy in your cells. <laughs> yeah, I would say maybe an updated because the Riffle and Death website's quite old. And if anyone out there knows how hmm. to archive an entire website, try and do that for that website because it would be an absolute tragedy if it went down. Because I, 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 th- I know the owner and I think they're, they're pretty busy with things. Um, I've tried to get them on my podcast, but I think one thing that would be added to their article there would be mitochondrial dysfunction because it's like the more mm-hmm. post 2010 issue, you know, with EMF and blue light mm-hmm. emerging. Um, yeah, mitochondria is definitely an aspect to look at for, for ADHD and all health issues. Mm-hmm. Someone asks, um, how do I overcome procrastination? Yeah, so that's like, (laughs) it's so broad and it's not even like an ADHD specific question, but, you know, it's good to ask and good to think about it in the context of maybe they think they have ADHD. But, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not an anti-procrastination expert, but, I mean, yeah, I guess part of that is a focus thing, part of it's a motivation thing, part of it's an organizational thing. There's lots of good information online but there's also lots of garbage information online and lots of ghost writing and, and all sorts of other stuff. So that would be something maybe um, that would be something to maybe for you to get as a podcast guest, maybe someone who's like that, that, that specializes in that. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, you, I don't, I can't really answer that without more information about what, you know, what exactly that person deals mm-hmm. with, but it's um, I'd say just relax, stop being stressed out about the deadline and just do your best and you're be okay with doing your best. That's awesome. Um, so someone asked, um, what are the downsides of taking 70 milligrams of Vyvanse daily? And I had to look that up. It's a list dexafetamine dimesylate. And uh, side effects include rapid or regular heartbeat, delirium, panic, psychosis, and heart failure. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> That's what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. The funny thing with that is, I've I've seen like a really popular alternative mainstream guy had like two hundred thousand subscribe followers on Instagram, and someone asked him a question about like, oh, which is Viance safer than Adderall? And his answer was like, yep, it's the one I recommend. But it's like, it's like saying, um, this poison is is slightly less toxic than this poison, so I recommend it. You know, it's like they're both. I mean, I it, it may be that it's better than Adderall. It may be, um, but anything that's that has side effects of psychosis and delirium and stuff. You know, we want to be really careful. So if you're on that, you need to look for a professional or or motivate yourself to slowly with you know withdraw from it. Um, and I'll in my in the links that I give to Matt afterwards, I'll include things we people you can go to. There are holistic psychiatrists in America. Um, so you, you can get help online from people who are qualified and allowed to give you that help. That's key word there. They're allowed to because they're mm. they've got the professional um, certifications. But yes, yeah, so I I would say I'm I'm not going to take Viance either. <laughs> it sounds like or otherwise. The, <laughs> these sound like the side effects from psychedelics. I mean, I've seen this at music festivals: rapid heartbeat, regular heartbeat, panic, psychosis. Del- uh, delirium these are all effects of you know magic mushrooms that i've seen anyway so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's interesting um someone asks it is adhd diagnosis a personality trait Jungian analytical psychology says so That's a good question. I have an idea of who might have asked that, actually. I think I know who asked that. <laughs> um, uh, is it a personality trait? Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, 
there are like like the hunter and the um, farmer gatherer society analogy plus like um, intense focus. I mean, it. I'm trying to figure out like why why that's even a question. I mean, yeah, yeah, okay, so yeah, yeah, like the having when you look at some of the traits because. Another yeah, another way of looking at this is that once you get, let's say, there's a person who got diagnosed with ADHD but never got drugged, and then um, their mother and father worked on the diet, lifestyle, environment, and relationship, and emotional issues, and schooling, and relationship with the teacher, and all that stuff, and they they optimize that to the best of their ability, but there's still the child's still like hyperactive still really active or still really inquisitive or still refuses to take orders you know to, to but but to a more reasonable degree reasonable subjective you know then you can start to say well look that's actually the personality that's the unique personality of this human being you know because after you've optimized all those things for a period of time and whatever's left over if they weren't on the drugs if they were on the drugs unfortunately you actually they say that you'll never know someone's true personality I heard peter Bregan say that if they've been on it for a long period of time as a child, because it's, you know, you've distorted their brain in the, in the growth phase. So um, that's unfortunate, but, but if, yeah, like if, if they hadn't been on it and, and, you know, you work on all the things that you should work on, whatever's left over is that unique person's personality. What, what did they mention about Jungian? What did they say about that? <laughs> that's wild. What you said, by the way, that you'll never know their true personality. Yeah, they said Jungian analytical psychology says that it's just a personality trait. Oh, just, just. Interesting. But they have the word just in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's definitely oh, not no, they, just they, there. That's, that's... Oh, no, they don't. I'm sorry. They don't. Yeah, I, I, added, I added that in. <laughs> oh, okay, all good, all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, um, that, that's an interesting angle. And I should probably, um, mm. if that person can message me on, on Instagram with some information about that, I'd, I'd be interested to read it and, and maybe repost it. I'm sure I'm sure there's some validity to that. Someone asks, is there a link between ADHD and narcissistic personality disorder, NPD? <laughs> oh no. Is that me? <laughs> um, I I haven't looked into that. I haven't looked into that. Um, but you know, it could totally be possible. Could totally be possible. But again, then you'd start have you'd have to start looking at is that person who's narcissistic on the drugs or have they been on it for an extended period of time or are they, were they undrugged? And if they were undrugged, what was their environment, nutrition, lifestyle, relationships? Because if they were on drugs, how can you say that the, the narcissism is like purely to do with that person or to do with their behavior based on the drugs or, um, or is it like a side effect of, you know the lack of nutrition i mean this opens up such a massive rabbit hole like so many of the things that are effed up about our society how much of it is related to people just on on different variety of drugs or lack of nutrition or, or substances that are making them behave in certain ways like the world can be completely different yeah. if everyone was healthy you know and so, so um it, yeah i'm sure it's possible there's a link can't really comment on it though awesome um what about food dyes and adhd <laughs> i know I, I think all these glass bottled sodas like you know fanta and stuff i always look at the ingredient label and it's very rare that these you know quote unquote healthy cane sugar sodas don't have like red dye in it or blue dye it's really sad yeah that's one of the ones that i even heard about when i was growing up i even heard that because i mm. obviously i didn't have a computer for ages but i i've always been a researcher like looking into things and even when i was on it i still didn't understand what was going on because i was in a zombie state on the drugs but i i did find that like sodium benzoate food coloring um th there was a correlation between these things and oh no what what it was was back then they would say that those things are bad for people with adhd that it makes it worse that they, 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 again that's like the controlled opposition narrative it's like they won't tell you that these things are causing it but they say it makes it worse so you should avoid them but not because it's making it it's just making it worse but yeah 
those are some of the most cut the dies are some of the most like repetitively mentioned issues like you'll find that on lots of websites so yes hmm. we haven't talked about sugar and i'm not sure your your perspective on this but we had a That's mom good. ask sugar or no <laughs> sugar or no sugar for a 10 year old with adhd if so not before bed yeah it's a tricky one because like i'm i'm super open-minded and and um i like to not even just have like a concrete opinion on on lots of things and i've so i've got like the repeat type people uh, that are advocating for sugar and i've got the kind of agonist von der Plants type people and the western a price that wouldn't really advocate it for it and then you know you'll sort of use it sometimes but you would also prefer maple syrup my seams and honey um and my my personal opinion just for my own health is that i don't use white sugar on or brown sugar on things but i also don't spaz out if i see it in something that someone makes for me um and i also think it's good to stockpile it because you can feed bees with it for when if um you know so i do think sugar is worth having for the right reasons but for a 10 year old and if your concern is adhd then i would say like it's just a it's just not worth the risk. Like just, just minimize it, just minimize it. And then, and you can find out later on if reintroducing it doesn't make a difference, but you, 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 you kind of want to do an elimination thing, not just with diet, but with lifestyle, you want to remove things and add them back in and see what, see what makes the best difference for them. And, and you want to ask on questions online to like you are now with the podcast, but also with to people like me or to, to on forums. And because it, yeah, you want to at least go go back to basics as much as possible. If you can't remove sugar from everything they eat, then don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. But I would say just the, the, the benefits of sugar are like are things that us that are really sort of nerdy about different complicated aspects of health like looking into and experimenting with. It doesn't need to be applied to people who just want to work on the, the, the foundational stuff. So. I would say, yeah, minimize it. That's awesome. Um, this might be the last one here. I think we, there were a lot of repeat questions and stuff you already addressed. Um, talk, someone says, talk about disturbed Shen and ADHD from a TCM perspective. Have you looked into that? Like the three treasures, like the, was it Chi, Shen, and um, forget the third one. I have not. That'd be cool if they could message me that stuff. I, I it I have thought about it from like the chakra perspective. Um and also the like etheric body feel, you know, perspective. Like uh, you know, you because you can you can be you can be like with the trauma thing, that can be a damage to your field, right? And and um and that can relate to you then cause different behaviors. But I haven't looked at it from the traditional Chinese medicine perspective. That would be really interesting to look at. But I would, I would guess that there are people online saying that oh, it's all about the shen. <laughs> There'll be someone out there saying like it's all about the shen. This is what you need to look into, and and it won't be. It, it like it'll be a part. It might be a part of the puzzle. It's probably definitely a small part of the puzzle. It might be a slightly bigger part of the puzzle, but it's just one part of the puzzle. Um, but I, I I do like that area of thinking. So I, I would say, yeah, there's probably some validity to it. Do you have you looked into that? Not for yeah. ADHD, but in general. A, a little bit. And, and by the way, the other one was Jing. I forgot. And I think I've heard it because I, I think I heard it from Ramania at a, a little conference I was at. He described it as a burning candle. And I think the the Oh, let's see if I can remember this. <laughs> the Jing is the candle itself. The Qi is the flame, and the Shen is the um, the aura that the flame kicks off. So that's like an analogy to visualize this in the human body, which I thought was really simple, easy way to picture it. So the Jing is like your long, slow burning energy, like your vital, deep essence, life force, and then your Qi is like what you use daily, and then your Shen's like your spirit or your aura. I, and that's probably a simplistic, oversimplified way of explaining it, but it's definitely an interesting area. That's the f furthest I've looked into it. And I guess certain herbs, you know, 
fortify it. And there's certain ones that fortify all three at once. I think Shazandra does that. Shazandra Berry. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. There's so many looks, different angles to look at this. And I like, I like your perspective that it's probably not one thing. It's multiple things. And it's like finding your weakest link, right? Yeah. Finding your weakest link. Yeah, for sure. And I, I just did a Google search on it. Shouldn't be using Google, but um, <laughs> it's, yeah, it didn't come up with with much, but that could be a good sign. Um, and it, I did find the wiki for for the three treasures. It just sounds too simple to me, though. Like, um, mm. it's, it sounds too simple, and like it keeps coming back to because no one asked about like, oh, someone did ask about trauma, but like all these health things, it could be like, it could be like needing to speak with someone more. You know, mm-hmm. there there are people out there and and it will sound a bit bad for me to say this but there are people out there that think that the attention deficit is the child the child's attention deficit the child's not getting enough attention and that makes total sense for society in general i mean i was i i lived in a in a nice home and everything so it wasn't much of an issue but like there are so many situations out there with both parents working um, long hours and then so the child isn't getting enough attention and to 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 ignore that as a potential cause is just like it's just mad and that's how we end up rationalizing continuing doing that living the destructive way we live like like a home should be capable of surviving on one parent's income like it that's the way it was for you know decades ago, and I mean, then the sort of the upper middle class and upper class can afford to do that nowadays. But it's sort of like a thing that only some people can do. And once upon a time, it was normal. And if you, I would, I would guess that if you looked at rates of ADHD and other things based on income level and parents at home and size of classroom, you'll find that the the smaller classrooms, the one where the child has the mom at home or one parent at home um, or gets more time just in general uh, overall, you know, would, would have lower rates of, of ADHD than the, the ones that don't. And, um, you know, it's really sad that there's people, kids getting put in like, you know, probably, you know, juvenile detention facilities, they probably have issues. And then that's going to make it worse because they're not going to get like access to their family or whatever. I know you taught at one of those sort of places. I'm thinking there, you know, maybe that's that's part of the problem in those sort of children's situation is that they've they're being deprived of family love and attention and making it right making it worse. and even fit, fit, physical touch even too, right? Which is like a human need, like food. <laughs> mm, 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 yeah, hugging and and all that. So yeah, that's why I had to find it hard to believe that it's like. Um, like the TC and the traditional Chinese medicine approach. But I mean, that sort of stuff could be useful for, oh, this person, you're not being aggressive enough or we're being too aggressive or, you know, maybe it's something like that um, worth considering. But it definitely wouldn't be the first place to look. But um, acupuncture, mm-hmm. some people have found acupuncture helpful, which was kind of mm-hmm. a surprise for me to hear. Um, but, you know, maybe it's like a particular nerve issue or muscle irritable you know irritation and then when you correct that that helps with the you know the person's you know spine neck and into the brain and that influences behavior um there are lots Mm. of people out there walking around with with physical pain and that could be um affecting their mindset i know naudi aguilar from fp he those guys talk a lot about how um people's physical symptoms are manifestations of, of of mindsets and some of it seems like a bit of a stretch but it's a really fascinating field to me and mm-hmm. and in the reverse that like say yeah so not the reverse but yeah like people's something happening in someone's physical body causing a causing something in the in the brain it it's plausible so the yeah the trouble with this topic is it's so it's so massive <laughs> now it just seems even more complicated than it was at the start to some people but i guess the the, the flip the benefit is that you, you you have so many stones untouched like there's there's an infinite number of things to try 
and and look into and you just need to find what's best to look at first and then keep trying keep trying keep talking keep asking questions i love it yeah um it's funny um noticing at staples we have i don't know if you have that store over there but you're in america it's popular it's like a you know office store and they're selling health products now so the other day we bought uh acupressure mat called the bed of nails it's like little spikes <laughs> oh, <go> on. <laughs> and uh that feels pretty good yeah yeah <laughs> it's supposed to release endorphins and oxytocin and all sorts of stuff so yeah so there's the like the <laughs> was it the indian it's like the ayurvedic thing i'm pretty sure mm-hmm. um i was just looking through the some of the screenshots you sent me there was one is it hereditary i don't know if we covered that one but mm. i think that one's just worth worth quickly covering because it's not a real thing as we've gone over but this is really offensive and damaging that they they actually try and push this so they they tried to claim they didn't like make a big deal about this but verbally they they implied that it was i inherited it from my dad so that's like driving a massive wedge between a son and father it's like oh you you've got this disorder and by the way he gave it to you it's like you inherited this disorder from him um because my, my dad was in the army for ages he's pretty really active and, and all that sort of stuff and so it's like that and i believed it 100 percent for for eight for until i figured this all out and so how how and that and that's a thought that you would hold through childhood that's in the back of your mind when this topic comes up it's like how much damage can they do? You know, not only are they doing it on the chemical level, it's on the psychological level as well. So it's not hereditary because it doesn't exist. But certainly you inherit personality traits, you inherit characteristics and attributes and behavioral things, um, even if you had foster parents just from being around your parents. So yes, you inherit those, what might be described as ADHD symptoms, but that doesn't prove it's hereditary. Like you know, if you grow up, um, oh, and no, I won't go into that, but yeah, it's it's um, it's not hereditary. I don't know if you have any thoughts on that. That seems like a cop out for a lot of different health conditions, right? Say, you know, <laughs> yeah. oh, he got he developed cancer. It's you know, it runs in his family or whatever. Diabetes is the big one, right? And that's to me BS because we know, you know, that we can alter our mitochondrial. Uh, function through fairly easily just through lifestyle modifications right yeah it's like we don't know it's hereditary or genetic or here's some pharmaceutical drugs or a combination of the above like that's the approach it's like if we get if we get stuck we'll just say it's genetic or we don't know um just it's 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 insane um yeah, someone else asked, is it is it genetic? Is it actually genetic? So that covers the same thing there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that is all of them. Yeah, well, this is pretty awesome, um, Tane. I appreciate you sharing your your research and experience and wisdom with this topic because it's one thing that um, I want to have more shows on, like the the you know quote unquote mental or psychological stuff, mm-hmm. like anxiety and depression just kind of busting myths about these things and um i think it's complex but in certain ways it's simple right and um it's just a matter of you know um kind of assessing your life your environment your you talked about your light your emfs your food your water and slowly upgrading like i'm 11 years in and people look at me like i'm an alien and come into the house and see you know it's like a spaceship in here with all the stuff i have yeah. running but it's like, it took me over a decade to get here. And it's like, I didn't do all this in one month or overnight. Yeah. It took a decade of experimenting and finding what didn't work, what was a waste of money, sifting through the BS. And it was a journey. So Yeah, and I hope I can help people in that way and with this podcast. And if you've got questions, DM me on, on Instagram or could even do like, ADHD coaching. I know there's people who who actually do that. And 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 on that note, a lot of the ADHD coaches, they're like certified ADHD coaches, and they all push the same BS that it's like the kid has something wrong with them, but I can help them work through it. It's like no one's telling them there's nothing wrong with you. 
gears than like holistic stuff and almost nobody's doing it and so there's a real gap in the market there um yeah and and i think i post a lot about mostly other things like that i only done three posts on adhd and i've like 700 posts or something on instagram but it i think it's i'm not going to be like a niche person but i think i will i will post more about it because it's there's a demand for it um and and it needs to get out there i think it's good that you're going to interview more people along this line of thinking along about these issues yeah absolutely and your website um is it grossanctuary.squarespace i think I oh no it. i think the website yeah. i need to i need to work on that um i just okay. thought it was just to, just to have like a link tree on instagram so i've got youtube and instagram cool. and just kept it simple but at some point in the future I may may get that back Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And I'll put the links below. Like I have the debunking ADHD book and, um, uh, if you have a link you want to put for the tomatoes or I could just put their standard link, I put the riddle and death conditions that mimic ADHD and any other links that you want me to put in the show notes. Um, I'll include them. And, uh, yeah, this was, this was fun. I think it'll help a lot of people and, um, it's a fascinating rabbit hole for sure. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's been it's been great to be on, Matt, and great to great to te- uh, talk with you. And I will send through some other links um, for people to look at and post some more stuff on my page as well. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll put the the links below. Is your YouTube and Instagram the same? Grow Sanctuary. If yep. They just search that. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, you have some cool EMF videos. I'm looking over here in my office that I'm slowly setting up, and I have my RF meter with a big green antenna on it. And uh, I walked around with the acoustic meter in this house and it's crazy being up in the mountains and still getting hit with, it's amazing how far are these Wi-Fi bubbles travel from your neighbors, even living in the mountains. It's just mind blowing. I have like 15 signals hitting the house here. <laughs> you know, they're weak, but still it's wild. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it's part of it. Like the higher up you are in an area the more you get like in lower you get less like if you're in a valley mm. so maybe if you are high up mm. and there's people living below you you get their signals too never thought about that it makes sense yeah yeah there's benefits and detriments to it i guess but <laughs> awesome team well uh yeah thanks so much and uh stick around as we close out the show that is all for today's show i love tane's response to the your hyperactive label that what if our whole society is underactive and i've noticed that over the years that there's this extreme imbalance similar to nutrition and extreme dieting whether it be keto or fasting or dairy free or gluten free this kind of extremism also applies to how people work. It's either nonstop, no breaks, overkill, or couch potato, consumer, binge watching, Netflix shows, and there's no balance in between. If I had to generalize, I think it's a safe generalization and an accurate one to say that most of society is underactive and they're not doing enough. They're not paying attention enough. They're not acting enough. And I don't mean taking action as in setting an alarm, getting up, washing your clothes in tap water, bathing in chloramine, jumping in your car, radiating yourself with EMFs, driving to your nine to five, working, coming home, eating, sleeping. That's not what I'm talking about with taking action. I'm talking about actually improving your health and improving your health of the people around you. That's why I have my life. That's why I have this podcast. I think that it makes the biggest difference because our supercomputer requires nutrients, magnesium, copper, B vitamins, sugar or carbohydrates, animal protein. There's a lot of things, but if you combine proper nutrition with digging for the truth, and being open to ideas like the ones that Tain shared in this episode, that's where I feel that we can 
take action that actually makes a difference and that truly changes the world. When the mitochondria in our neurons work, we can make logical decisions. If we have mitochondrial dysfunction in our brain cells, we will not make logical decisions and we will be spinning our wheels. So besides that rant, I wanted to share something interesting with you guys after the podcast. I googled Ritalin death and I scrolled through tons of pages. Of course, there's the usual WebMD, Guardian, Medical News Today, PubMed, various websites, but no mention of RitalinDeath.com, which you'd think that'd be at the top of the search, but it's not. In this website, Death from Ritalin, the truth behind ADHD, has a lot of great resources and information. I love the article that Tane highlighted called Conditions That Mimic ADD or ADHD. And the list is super long. And it reminds me of all of the different health conditions that I get emails and messages about every single day of I have X, Y, Z condition. Matt, what do you recommend? What if they're making up conditions? Like Tane said, what if you're attached to the spell that the doctor cast on you, giving you a certain name? What if it's false? That might upset a lot of people. But when you get down to it, when you start listening to people like Morley Robbins, you find that everything boils down to metabolic dysfunction caused by mineral imbalance. And of course, there's B vitamin deficiency, there's animal protein deficiency, there's carbohydrate, even calorie deficiency, people just simply not eating enough. That will cause issues. And it's a big picture, but people tend to be hyper-focusing on the wrong things, taking the wrong supplements, zinc, ascorbic acid, iron, hormone D, cholecalciferol D3, which causes hypercalcification. They're eating foods and taking supplements that are depleting the things that you're already deficient in, like magnesium, vitamin K2, vitamin E, retinol. And it's scary to think that these psychiatric meds that kids and adults are being put on is exacerbating the issue, further depleting retinol, magnesium, copper, and spiraling people further down into hopelessness and a point of no return. It's really sad. And as Tane said, these drugs do cause severe brain damage. And so this is a really important issue. I think more important than the current world events that are happening today that everyone's freaking out about and in fear about. This is a real issue. And like we touched on, this extends to mass public shootings, school shootings. It's not the guns that are the issue. It's these hardcore psych drugs. And when you combine that with a smorgasbord of pharmaceutical drugs that people are peeing into their toilet, and then that's going through the wastewater treatment plant and those aren't getting removed and people are ingesting those in the drinking and bathing water where we don't know the toxicological synergy. This has never been done before. It's a grand experiment for people to be microdosing 40, 50, 100 pharmaceutical drugs in the water. You even have people promoting tap water as being more environmentally friendly. And it's no wonder why people have a psychotic break and shoot up public places because their brain is damaged. They have severe mitochondrial dysfunction going on in their brain and the system, the mainstream medical system. And I would go as far as to say the mainstream alternative system is not your friend because the omega threes will just make things worse. The zinc will make things worse. The liposomal products, the ascorbic acid, those are just going to cause further imbalance in the body and make mood 
quote unquote disorders worse. So I'll put all the links below uh, the debunking ADHD book that Tane recommended, uh, the Tomatis product, the headset that he recommended. I'll put his YouTube channel and his Instagram. I really appreciate him shining light on this subject because I don't think it's talked about enough. It's like the elephant in the room. I don't think we realize how many people are hooked on these hardcore mind altering pharmaceutical drugs. If I were dealing with a neurological imbalance that created mood swings, depression, anxiety, any kind of emotional, psychological issue, I would focus on getting enough magnesium. I would definitely get a red blood cell called an RBC magnesium blood test. It's $30. Well worth it. Probably the most important blood test you can ever get in your life. I would also, if it were me, this is not medical advice, I would also make sure I was getting enough bioavailable copper. That would be from food sources such as organ meats, especially liver, like beef liver, either desiccated or the real thing. They work almost identically. Bee pollen, berry powders, Mitolife has a resiliency product, but camu camu, amla berry, fruit, potatoes, pretty much any animal product. These are all excellent sources of copper, but for a lot of people, they need the heavy hitters and those would be beef liver, shilajit, and oysters. Those are really dense sources of bioavailable copper. A lot of these psychological emotional issues are caused by iron overload. And when iron accumulates in the tissues, let's just say the brain, then we can't utilize oxygen properly. And if the brain starts to rust because it's not turning oxygen into water at complex four of the mitochondria, then we have a problem. We have energy deficiency, which then creates depression, anxiety, and all of the psychological, emotional disorders that we give names to. That's my take on it. Of course, electromagnetic fields like Wi-Fi have a huge effect, but if I had to simplify it best I could, that's how I would do it. That's what I would personally focus on. Uh, if you want to support my work, my website's matt-blackburn.com. I have all of my recommended products up there, blog posts, my CLF protocol, recipes. And I want to highlight the Swiss Dream Bed from CBH Wood Furniture. I remember going to a health conference several years ago and seeing this exact same bed that was selling for, I believe, twelve, thirteen, or fourteen thousand dollars. It was somewhere in that ballpark. And this is the exact same technology, the exact same bed for less than $2,000. So it's really affordable. It's the only bed that I purchase and sleep on. Really good family owned company, really high quality, no metal, all natural materials. Uh, even the latex is next level. It's not what you would find at your average bedding store. I know a lot of people have back issues and they just don't talk about it. Too much sitting or poor posture. This bed really helps with that. It's almost like a chiropractic treatment, the way they set up the wooden slat system. It feels so supportive and healing on the back. So if you mention my name, you can save 5% on any of their beds. And my brand is called Mitolife. You can find that at M-I-T-O-L-I-F-E dot com. Few updates. We finally have Panacea Shilajit tablets back in stock. And those are rolling in every day now. So they're pretty much always in stock now. Really happy to announce that because they've been out for quite a while. And to me, that is the most important supplement to take. If you just had to pick one, everyone always asks me that question. It's so broad acting because Shilajit will chelate excess iron. There's not many things that do that. And it actually contains not copper, but active copper. 
Shilajit actually contains ceruloplasmin, copper in its active form. That's huge. That's very rare. You find that in raw milk. But that's why raw milk, either raw goat milk or if you can handle it, raw cow milk, works so well with Shilajit tablets. And that's how it's traditionally used in India. It's milk and Shilajit together. And that is such a healing combo simply because of how it acts on iron overload to really help with that situation. We also launched grounding bed sheets. So if you click on the shop and then go to the living tab, you can see grounding technology and we have twin, full, queen, and king. This is something that I've been doing for over a decade. It's one of the first things I did when I discovered natural health. I was getting into water and magnetism and light. But one of the first things I hit before light and water was magnetism. So the house I grew up in, in Point Loma by the beach in San Diego, California, for about 20 years, I had my dad crawl into the crawl space under the house and hammer in a grounding rod under my bedroom. And that was really the very beginning of my health journey, just reconnecting to the earth while I slept. Because a lot of people emphasize, you know, first thing upon waking, getting barefoot outside, connecting with the earth as much as you can. But the most important time to do it is when you're asleep. That is by far the most important time to earth slash ground is when you're asleep because that's when your body is healing. And there's a lot of nuances to this where it's something you have to experiment with. So if you're living under a power line versus living in an apartment with 50 Wi-Fi signals hitting you on the fourth or fifth story or in a hotel, there's so many nuances to this subject of grounding and mitigating EMFs. I would just caution you against purchasing a quantum product or a tourmaline or a shungite product that's really the bottom of the barrel when it comes to EMF mitigation. I have a 30-minute MitoLife Academy video. It was an advanced one that I shot about a month ago for my YouTube channel for subscribers that pay every month, 25 bucks. And the first thing that I emphasize, the most practical, the most logical, the most grounded is magnesium because it's a natural calcium blocker, calcium channel blocker. Because the biggest issue with EMFs is that the calcium ion channels, the voltage-gated calcium ion channels open. And not only calcium, but iron floods into the cell. And that causes extreme oxidative stress, which means an increase in the production of ROS, reactive oxygen species. And there's proxy nitrite, there's the hydroxyl radical, you have EMF induced lipid peroxidation. It gets really complicated, but if I had to simplify it in the context of grounding and conductive silver bed sheets, I would say just experiment. And if you're in EMF hell, like that me, that would be like a Hilton hotel or in New York city or in a big city where you're just getting bombarded with EMFs. At that point, you probably want to put an umbrella up around you and actually like an EMF shielding tent kind of thing. Or you might want to check out the company No Choice. They sell silver embedded clothing. And there's a bunch of companies now. You can find beanies, hoodies, t-shirts, pants, even gloves and socks. But the most practical way to do it would probably be to get like a silver a sleeping bag or a tent and crawl into that and make sure it's completely enclosed. There's not even one millimeter that's open to allow EMFs to flood in. And that would be the solution. And then you could also play with the Magnetico sleep pad, which I've had an episode with Dr. Dean Bonley about that. But when you get into magnetism and EMFs, it's so nuanced. People like to simplify it and say, oh, if you're grounded, you're 100% protected. That is 1,000% not true. It's all context. It's all nuanced. It's very complicated. 
But like I said, just experiment. Ideally, you do rod to earth. So when you buy a sheet, it comes with just your regular third prong grounding cord. And the grounding rod is extra. So it's 15 bucks. You can add that to your sheet. And that's what I do. I throw it out the window, hammer it into the dirt, and just keep that area wet with rain or snow, or you can water it yourself. And I notice a huge increase in my sleep quality. Better deep sleep. I feel more refreshed. I feel less stressed throughout the day. Uh, it's really profound what sleeping on silver threads connected to the earth can do for you. And on the product page, I wrote that up myself. I made a little unboxing video you might want to check out. It's pretty cool. I dropped some interesting tips, even if you're savvy and advanced and have been known about this for years. I share some interesting things in there. And there's the studies on that page. So studies on vagal tone, reducing blood viscosity, proving facial blood flow, uh, proving inflammation, uh, helping cortisol levels, so many things. So check that out. Uh, should last at least a year if you don't sweat on it <laughs> profusely because that will decrease the conductivity. I recommend just using it as a half sheet, ideally. So just put it on the bottom half of the bed. And that way, even if you sweat, normally we're not sweating profusely on our thighs and lower. Usually it's the back. So you'll sweat on your regular bed sheets, not on the grounding sheet. It only takes one point of body contact to ground yourself. So I pretty much focus on torso down to ground and you get the same effect. So that's it. Uh, check out the Mito Life Academy, uh, basic, intermediate, and advanced. I've been a little behind since I moved from Idaho to Colorado a couple weeks ago to be closer to my lady because I wasn't really tied to North Idaho. A few friends up there, but most of my family and friends were out of state. And it's the third state that I've ever lived in, so that's kind of cool. It's definitely out of my comfort zone. I'm more of a homebody. I could stay home all the time and never leave and be happy which is cool kind of in the context of current world events where we're kind of prisoners in our own home. It doesn't bother me at all, but maybe that's because I'm in the mountains and I cannot live in the city anymore. So we're up at 8,000 feet in Colorado and I'm enjoying the food. It's a little harder to find raw dairy, but we just figured that out. There's a lot of companies that can ship that to your door and I don't want to name names because they might get in trouble. So I'm keeping that on the down low. But you can find raw dairy wherever you are if you search hard enough. And speaking of that, I had Morley Robbins on the show again recently. And I learned from him that raw dairy contains lactoferrin and ceruloplasmin. Both of those are destroyed when you pasteurize milk. You still get the retinol, so it's still worth it. It's still worth it to consume uh, cooked pasteurized dairy. Absolutely. I would say just maybe take my dairy absorb or a lactase enzyme with it to uh, put back what they took out, which is the lactase enzyme, uh, ceruloplasmin, lactoferrin. And you could supplement all those things, but it gets expensive. I would say maybe just take some desiccated or freeze-dried beef liver capsules with your coffee and cream that's kind of the quote unquote hack that i'm doing to put back in what they took out and i feel amazing on that combo of course i take five panacea tablets with that as well but yeah exciting episodes coming up i'm interviewing dr scott share next month we're going to talk about methylene blue and do a deep dive into that with his company that he's involved in transcriptions and I also have Jim Stevenson Jr. coming back to the show for the third time. And it's going to be a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, once again, talking about secosteroid hormone D, a.k.a. D3 or vitamin D, and how it actually causes harm to supplement it. So thanks for listening. The new episode released every Friday. Stay supercharged. Stay supercharged.